be honest, I was a little intimidated by the Golden Series at first. I never won a Golden Trail Series race before. It really is open who can win today. L'importante è vincere. It's always good to win at home. We have the two weapon to win everything. This is the head-to-head -head we've been waiting for. If you don't know what trail running is and you think it's like running, <laughs> you're miles off. At the moment on the overall ranking I'm 11th, which is a tricky spot. Having two athletes at the final, this is crucial to us as a brand. It shows credibility. One of the teams that's been really impressive this season has been Team Matrix. Just behind Salomon, I think we, we can be the second big team of the world. It's really hard to see the limit. It's amazing. How can you fuck up your body if you don't listen to it, really? All you see is the, the glorious finish line shot of winning or passing or the epicness of it, but there's so much more humanity in trail running, and I think that's the real reason we all love it. As many people say, like running is the most simple sport in the world, but when you connect that with the race, then it gets way more complex. Oh my gosh, like if I can't finish the race at this point, like I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, no, I have a lot of new scars. You need to take something home from, from such a race.
lot of sports, but quickly I turned into cross-country skiing and biathlon, which has been my main way of living life for the last 28 years, I guess. Very few of the athletes start out of trail runners. It actually sucks in the best talents from other sports. My first sport where I was competing was radio orienteering. For me, my first sport is chemo. I ran track, but trail is where my heart is at now. I think something about trail runners is that we often don't identify as just trail runners, but more just lovers of the outdoors. To be honest, I was a little intimidated by the Golden Series at first. I never won a Golden Trail Series race before. It really is open who can win today. Uh, it's always good to win at home. We have the two weapons to win everything. This is the head-to-head -head we've been waiting for. If you don't know what trail running is and you think it's like running, <laughs> you're miles off. At the moment, on the overall ranking, I'm 11th, which is a tricky spot. Having two athletes at the final, this is crucial to us as a brand. It shows credibility. One of the teams that's been really impressive this season has been Team Matrix. Just behind Salomon, I think we, we can be the second big team of the world. I think it's really hard to see the limit. It's amazing. How can you fuck up your body if you don't? listen to it really. All you see is the the glorious finish line shot of winning or passing or the epicness of it but there's so much more humanity in trail running and I think that's the real reason we all love it. As many people say like running is the most simple sport in the world but when you connect that with the race then it gets way more complex. Oh my gosh like if I can't finish the race at this point like I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, no, I have a lot of new scars. You need to take something home from, from such a race.
All right. Welcome, everyone. Welcome to Stranda, Norway. I am with Hans and Martin will be your guests for the 2022 Stranda Fjord Trail Race. That's right. We're here in Stranda. It's on the west coast of Norway. I think this is probably one of the most beautiful areas we have. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so um, you can very easily and quickly guess who's from Norway and who's wearing a puffy jacket because I'm <laughs> extremely cold. <laughs> uh, but hopefully things will warm up and surely things will warm up. I'll take off uh, that jacket for a uh, t-shirt. So this is gonna be extremely exciting. This is the, um, the third race of the Golden Trail World Series. And for the first time we're coming to uh, the Nordic country, to Norway. And um, while well, we're in for a treat, uh, if you haven't listened to the podcast, the pre-race podcast, uh, we explained everything about the course, who is there, but we'll give you all the details again um, for you to best uh, enjoy and experience this live coverage. We have a big international feel as well as some very strong local runners uh, that uh, Hans will be able to tell you a lot about. Yeah, man, I know everyone pretty much personally, so uh, I'll get some, uh, I'll give you some, uh, some juicy stuff. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Good. Uh, so we're going to have the course preview, so you get acquainted with it. Here on the screen, you'll see the race profile, uh, but you'll get the actual 3D uh, course preview so you can understand a little bit what it's about. And actually, we'll tell you also what it's about because there are several different sections uh, that will all be essential. So the start is going to be about two kilometers on a gravel road uphill, actually quite steep right from the get-go. So we'll see the fast mountain runners probably uh, make uh, their way in the lead, potentially open up a gap. We know Andy Walker from the US is a specialist in, at that game. And then it branches into a, a trail, like a single track. Still, I wouldn't say to the technical part yet because the technical part really comparatively uh, starts uh, about here where you see on the, sc on the screen right now. Yeah, this they're gonna be ha have to use their hands. Use their hands yeah. and it gets extremely steep as you can see obviously uh, on the screen. This is a boulder field about like cat size boulders. <laughs> some are moving, some are not moving. Yeah, so it's ridiculous. You're gonna pick your chance and this is the out and back. So they're gonna go up to the top and then back down and then up to the uh, down to the saddle. And to me, this is the most technical. We've both run the yeah. course. We've experienced uh, firsthand what it was and this is the steepest, uh, most technical because it's essentially rocks, but they're super slippery. Everything's wet. Oh yeah, and here we uh, are moving into the swamp, the swamp era. It's like a, a downhill swamp. Yes, no, slightly downhill, uh, but th this is incredibly hard to run in this because there is a trail, but if you step in the trail, you actually, you, you're worse off than on the side. And sometimes you step and you're like ankle deep into the mud or into the water or into super soft moth. So it's going to be very interesting to see the strategy from the runners on that section, whether they're going to try to open up a gap like the orienteering runner Fred Tranchant, he will be super comfortable in there or try to save their strength. Here you've got the two course records uh, established in the previous editions. Uh, we have a much deeper field, however, the conditions are way worse. So how are we going to be under still or slightly over? We still don't, uh, don't have the answer. And so then let's talk about the last part here. Uh, you, you know it as well. And I think this is a bit closer uh, to what we see usually on, uh, in European races. Yeah, the last kilometer. That's uh, what people are used to. The rest, no, they're not used to that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and so that's, that's going to be super in interesting. We have a lot of... Um, uh, runners who are comfortable and technical and uh, and uh, we will see how they can handle the kind of Norwegian technical which is very specific and uh, again we've experienced that and there's no shoe that actually sticks uh, on the wet rocks above because there's kind of a small layer of moss onto it and so there's just no way to grape onto it so it's basically who has the most skills, but also who's willing to take a chance. And uh, yeah. I think if there's one thing we can guarantee that there's gonna be falls. So hopefully nothing major, uh, hopefully nothing uh, critical, but there will be uh, falls because these, these people, men and women are here to compete, to win, to push their limits and, uh, and certainly not to uh, have a conservative approach. So you had uh, here the top 10 or so, uh, kind of the, the men's and women's favorite that we expect to see on the screens. But again, um, we expect some surprises, uh, both in oh, the men's yeah. and women's. For sure. Yeah, I think we're, we're going to see, uh, there's a lot of uh, really strong uh, Norwegian runners, like Anders Haga, you see here. He's the course record holder, 231 yep. from last year. It was a dry, dry year. This year it's been raining all summer and last week it's been horrible. So. 
uh, we'll see how Anders does uh, today. I talked to him yesterday. He's uh, he's in shape, and I think he can uh, he can give uh, John Alban a a run for his money. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And there's uh, Anders Sjadevik, aka Pony. Yeah, Pony, uh, Johnny. <laughs> what yeah, he has yeah. a lot of nicknames because for us, like <laughs> uh, non Nordic countries, it's just impossible to pronounce his family name. Uh, but we've got we got a lot of strong runners, and I think one that actually went under the radar is uh, Roberto De Lorenzi from Switzerland. Because uh, I actually remember that just this morning while having breakfast, I remember like in Kimgao, um, which was in in, in Germany, uh, the start was very similar with a very long, very runnable uphill, and he was together with Francesco Pupi, like two mountain running specialists, uh, like blowing up the field and, and actually pulling away right from the start. So we can totally expect him to potentially go with Andy Walker uh, up uh, right from the get-go. This is the the, the starting line. Yeah, we have some uh, visuals here uh, that you see at the bottom. And so essentially from there, they're just going straight uphill. Um, and in the women's as well, I think um, we'll have mountain running specialist uh, potentially pull, trying to pull away before the technical part. Um, and, uh, and, and we'll see how they can uh, how they can open either a gap or uh, just try to work their competitors because uh, we have uh, we have then uh, who do we have? Uh, Karina Corsolio, who I expect to go extremely hard on, on the technical. Uh, I don't know if you know any uh, local... Emily Forsberg, Forsberg of course. Emily Forsberg on this kind of terrain. She was pretty quiet at the um, athlete presentation at the press conference uh, yeah. yesterday. She was like, oh, you know, this is my terrain, but... Ah, uh, but she's in shape. Uh, yeah. she, she said, she, said she's, she has had the... The, the biggest block of training for the past four years. She had like six <laughs> consistent weeks of training. So she said like, for you, it might not mean a lot, but for me, it's, it's substantial. Yeah. And uh, she, yeah, she was actually excited to to be able to compete with um, with the world-class runners in her backyard and, uh, and potentially show them how it's done. Yeah, she's been doing some uh, local uh, Norwegian races. I mean, in her backyard, she set a course record on the Besseglöpe, which is a race that's been going since the 60s. So, um, yeah, she's in shape. Yeah, you can see the it's quite rainy here, <laughs> uh, but it's not as bad as it was, uh, it was going to be. It was going to be uh, about 15 or 18 millimeters today. Uh, but right now, I think it's about uh, two millimeters of rain. Yeah, what, what is essential for you to understand is that we ha there was an option for a B course if the weather condition were actually too bad or actually freezing uh, up at the top because frozen rocks was just a no-go. Um, but luckily, uh, we'll, like all the runners will be able to run on the A course and this is, this is what we want to hear because that's, that's, that is the Stranda Fjord uh, race. This is what all the runners have come for and, uh, and they will be served. So on the left of the screen, you get uh, Zaid Al Malik, who, oh, that will be another runner to look for yeah, yeah. in the technical section right next to him. Uh, Sara Alonso, um, we know her. She has only two gears, zero and full gas. <laughs> so she was a bit nervous about the technical part because she's like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to slow down. Uh, so I'll, I'll see how it goes. And if I die, it'll be fun. Uh, she was obviously joking. But there we go. Um, they are off 11 uh, local time. And uh, we have Stronda Fjord 2022 on the way. Thank you so much for being with us, whether you're on YouTube or um, Facebook. You can actually leave us comments. It's, I think it's very important for you to also get involved. Uh, if you have information or maybe like, we're going to get excited, we might say something wrong. So please correct us, add us as much information as you can, because this is what this life is all about, is that to share it with you all. Yeah, and now, let us know where you're uh, watching from. That's also interesting. Oh, yeah, yeah. We'll probably have a crowd coming from all over the world. And, um, and so they're, they're on the way. And so is that going to be, is that gonna be according to the expectations that Andy Walker, who's on the right of your screen with the white T-shirt, blue cap, is it going to try and, and go away and try to pull away from his competition? Um, also, uh, something uh, that we, we need to know, if you haven't listened to the pre-race podcast, is that Davide Malini, who's a very strong climber, um, he's not going to the final. He has not the chance to go to the final. So basically, he has nothing to lose. All right, so he has to do a great race today. Well, essentially, if, if a runner wants to do well in the overall ranking for yeah. the Golden Trail World Series, you have to go to the final because it's five stages and at every stage you can score additional points. All right. So because he's not going, he's, he just knows that he's going to be out. 
So actually the current leader overall is actually not going to be the final leader. So this, this spot is up for grabs, but knowing that he's here and he wants to give his 200%, uh, it's going to be interesting to see uh, how he behaves. Uh, I think I was wrong, and uh, with the blue cap, it, it's actually uh, Bartolomeo Pretty Risky. Yeah, yeah. And so, where is um, Andy Walker? That's that's the question. Yeah, where is John Albon? Uh, John Albon is probably here. like taking it easy right now. He's warming up nice and easy. Yeah, I uh, I did the course with John last week, and he was doing some uh, threshold uh, repeats up there. Nice. Uh, and. Um, he he told me he was expecting to be on the on the top of uh, Fremste Blåhorne, which is the the first big mountain, like the out and back mountain. Ah, the, the highest point. Yeah, yes. the highest point. Yeah. He was going to be there in about one hour and fifteen minutes. That's, That's what he said, and he, and he, said, he actually noted that. He says like, it's interesting because usually in races you spend much more time climbing, and then because you're much faster going down, uh, you you uh, you spend less time going down. But actually, he said. The timing up going up and the timing going down is about equal. Okay. Because uh, he, he was playing on 115 and 115 to be around the course record time. Okay. And uh, and so it's going to be interesting to see if he can actually stick to that plan. So we're now back, and uh, this is uh, coming from the U.S. Uh, I'll get her name in a second, but she's a cross-country skier, extremely big engine, and it is no surprise to see her uh, up here in the lead of the women's field. Sophia Lockley. There you go. Thank yeah. you. That's what we do. Um, and um, we actually did a part uh, part of the, the the course Reiki with her, and she was quite impressed with the technical part. So maybe she's one of the runners who sit. Who knows that she has to play her cards right on that first section, on that runnable section, even though it is uphill. Uh, this is where strong mountain runners, as opposed to trail runners or sky runners, uh, can make a difference. She lives in Norway. She has a, a dual citizenship. And, uh... Okay, so now we're trying to move up the field. Let's see if we can get catch a glimpse of who's in the lead. Uh, if uh, so, we have okay. This is Adrien Michaud on the left for Team Scott. Um, he's been uh, he's been on the edge of the top ten in the past two races, so we can expect him to do well. I'm trying. So you got Zaid Al Malek. We can recognize the the hair. Um, there you go, Thibaut Baronion as well. Roberto De Lorenzi, I was telling you, here, is, here it is. So Bart is actually the one pushing the pace, that's awesome. And then right behind him was um, Andy Walker together with John Alban. So yeah, and Magnini. And David right Magnini was yeah. uh, as well here. So this is interesting, Bart is not in the lead. He, he never comes to a race unprepared. He said he wanted to have a good go at it and now he is the one pushing the pace. And talking about Bart, we actually have a little bit of an interview with him. So let's see what he had to say prior to this race. Since you've been away, there has been a Polish man from your village running who wears cornrows. He came sixth in Mont Blanc. Is it you in disguise? <laughs> yeah. It is? <laughs> oh, wow. So, Bart has never left. But sixth, Bart, you must have been disappointed with sixth in Mont Blanc. Uh, sorry, David, but we have to repeat. <laughs> you, uh, so, you must have been disappointed with sixth in Mont Blanc. This uh, is below your normal level. Yeah, of, of course. <laughs> I, I was su su supposed to, he will be on the top three, of yeah. course. He, you, he let you down, you let yourself down. All right, so we have those uh, little interview clips with uh, our now infamous David, who's um, bugging the runners about <laughs> all sorts of random questions, but that's what's keeping it fun. And now we have, okay, Davide Manini now has caught up with Bart, and um, hopefully these two, you know, both in Team Salomon, can work together. But again, uh, John is just sitting there, just looking at what's going on, probably staying in control. We've seen him extremely strong on, uh, on uphills at Mont Blanc Marathon, where he won at the end of June, 
and uh, I was still blown away by, uh, you probably know the name of the race, I, I totally blank on it, but uh, a half marathon uphill on the road. Nibbalopa. There you go. Yeah. And so for, for, for those of you out there, it's a half marathon, um, and he ran it on, on the road, and he ran it in 130. So all of a sudden, he's like, oh, 130. 1,500 meters of climb. And that's where it gets a interesting. A little detail you left out there. <laughs> <laughs> Purposely, I just wanted people to be like, oh, you know, you yeah. build it up. And he's like, yeah. 1,500 meters of climb, and he's capable of running a, a road half marathon in 130. That was absolutely insane, and he shows how fit and how capable of running fast uphill he is. So, smart move here from Davide Manini uh, with long sleeves and probably already the gloves, if I'm correct, because uh, the more they're going to go up, the, the colder it's going to get. It is not uh, down to freezing temperature, but we, uh, I don't know how it was when you were up there, but when we were up there, it wasn't very cold, but the wind... And, and the fact that it was wet made it actually extremely cold. And I mean, we all know, and if you don't, this is, this is something to take into account, is that as soon as you get cold, the amount of energy you're wasting trying to warm your body up is, is tremendous. And so for those athletes, uh, they just cannot afford to have any energy expenditure outside of uh, pure power in their legs. It's uh, it's uh, going to be about uh, two degrees Celsius on the top. Oh, wow. Yeah, yeah and uh, there's, it's gonna be windy and uh, rainy. Uh, so uh, I think the effective, um, the effective, it's going to feel like uh, minus four, minus five. It's well, going to be super cold. I'd be wearing two puffy jackets. <laughs> 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 All right. So again, if you're joining us, we're uh, on the way seven minutes, almost eight minutes into the Tonda Fjord Trail Race um, third stage of the Gold Trail World Series. And oh, there we go. Here he is Fred Tranchant, uh, the orienteering runner from uh, Team Scott Running. And uh, he's the one to look uh, for in the kind of the bug section uh, because he, he will flow through it effortlessly. He's got a, like a bit of a different running style, but I can tell you that much. It is extremely efficient on, on the technical terrain. And uh, John Albon, who is also kind of staying hidden while Bart is just going at his own pace up the hill. There you go. We're back on the field. And Lucien Elazawi as well. Um, with the blue shorts and the um, yellow, uh, yellow, uh, white arm sleeves. Sorry, there you go from Team Pirin. Uh, and I think Roberto De Lorenzi is still here. We have all the usual suspects here. No surprise so far uh, on that very runnable section. It's about two and a half k's, and then they will branch into uh, the single track. Still going uphill, uh, but still not completely um, stopping them. That will happen after the 8th K in the first aid station. It, it doesn't look like it, but it's actually quite steep here. Yeah, it, it's above 10%. I think you're absolutely yeah. right to mention that <clears throat> because they look as though they're going pretty fast, and they are, but uh, I tell you that <laughs> not much. Not a whole lot of people can run at this pace up uh, search gradient. And yeah, it is, it is uh, more than 10%. Yeah, if this was at the end of a, a longer ultra race, I would probably be walking. Oh, that, that, that would be yeah. what we call a douche grade, yeah, where yeah. we know you have to run, but you just can't. Classic douche grade. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so uh, I don't know if we can get images as well from the ladies, just, just to see what's going on. If uh, Sofia is still in the lead and how far ahead she would be. If um, um, Elise Ponce as well, who was second in the uh, mountain running world champs back in Patagonia. Uh, this is also going to be her kind of terrain in this first two and a half kilometers. So she could potentially uh, try to take advantage of that and uh, try to reel, up, reel in, sorry, uh, Sophia. Um, and then Blondine Lirondel as well. Uh, she, she has a big engine, so she could definitely run fast on that kind of terrain. And I was t tell talking to her uh, a little bit earlier this week, and she was a bit worried uh, about the technical part and she was just going to try and do her best but she was very very well aware that that was not going to be her forte so maybe she's going to try and push again early on everyone should be worried about the technical part <laughs> no i can tell you <laughs> i can tell you for sure that one person at least not being from norway it is is not only not scared but is excited uh, about this is manuel merias and you will see him, hopefully we'll have images of him running down. And he's just an animal on technical. He does a lot of alpinism. And he actually secretly said that he was hoping that there would be snow up there. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but this is, this is really cool because we actually have uh, GPS chips on, uh, on the top runners. So there's a bit of a mistake, but at least we'll get an overranking because there's no way <laughs> Sarah Alonso, Sofia Lockley, and Brandon Lirondel are uh, ahead. Oh, no, I thought it was Bart. Okay, no, that is only the female. 
uh, only the female, so that's a very good indication. So okay. Sarah Alonso, uh, who I told you had only two gears, has actually caught up with Sofia, and she's like, you are not going anywhere. She was third uh, at uh, Zigama, then Sarah won at Mont Blanc Marathon. She is here to win again. And uh, I think it is a good move, but it's, it's a bold move, because she would know that uh, Sofia is not necessarily very comfortable on technical. And, uh, and I believe, but that's just my prediction, that Sarah will be a bit more comfortable. So instead of blowing all your, your ammos in this long climb, you might want to take it a little bit easier. And it's interesting because, yeah, uh, you just saw on the left of your screen here, um, uh, Andy Walker, who I was predicting would go out and, uh, and actually be far in the lead, and he actually is not. And he's just uh, keeping the pace. And we have someone here, uh, 42B. That I do not know. Do you know this this runner? No, let's check him up. 42B. 42B. Uh, right now, uh, going at a very good pace in third position behind Davide Manini. And Bart again has pulled away. And now he's about 20 meters on the rest of the field. That is an interesting move because Bart is also capable of running on technical. There's no question about it. And once he will get to the bug, like he has such insane power that in, uh, as opposed to Fred Tranchant, who will move lightly and effortlessly through that. Bart is just going to track through with power. And uh, wow, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be interesting to see how much of, a, of an opening he can get to the, to the single track and then uh, at the AK mark just before they essentially hit the wall, but literally um, going up to the highest summit for the out and back on the technical. Yeah, I don't think I, uh, my list is updated. So we had a 43 or 42B? No. No. All right, well, if anybody out there knows who <laughs> yeah. that runner is, uh, please give us a shout either on YouTube, in the comments, or on Facebook. Uh, that would be awesome uh, if we could find his name. And, uh, and you, there's already a lot of you guys out there with us commenting. This is pretty cool. Uh, we're excited to, to have you follow this incredible live again. Uh, this course is by a long shot the most technical race uh, of the Golden Trail series. And after the first two races being very fast and dry, we finally are treated with wet condition, muddy condition, slippery conditions. And so now we can unleash the runners who are comfortable and technical and see, uh, see how it goes. So there we go. Fred Tranchon has made a move. He's following now Davide Manini. Uh, back out, uh, pulling away from the field. Uh, Elusine Lazawi just behind is trying to keep up. And uh, oh, we've got our bike cameraman just looking a bit down on the ground. There we go. And uh, trying to keep up. That's us. <laughs> Hello. Hello. So, yeah, we're back to the studio. <laughs> so basically, the two of us with Hans were sitting uh, in uh, the building right at the finish line. So we'll get the chance to then catch the runners and potentially get an interview with at least the men and women winners as they cross the finish line shortly after to uh, give you, share with you their first impressions. Uh, but in the meantime, we'll uh, keep telling you what's, uh, what's happening here. There's about 250 people who ran the 48 kilometers. Oh, there we go. We've got the, the, um, the trackers. So Sarah Alonso is together with uh, Sophia Lokley. Blondine Lirondel, I was telling you, very, very strong. Um, Caitlin Fielder, Emily Forsberg. Um, ah, what's her name? Uh, Kowalski from from the U.S. She's from Boulder, so she'll she'll be good with altitude. Um, yeah, we have some Scandinavians here. Uh, Sylvia Nushkar uh, is not far behind. She's a really good uphill runner and downhill runner. So um, yeah, we have uh, Henriette Alban, not far behind her. So Karina Carsolio, I was telling you, like, is very very strong on the on the technical, but she's like a bit far. Uh, back, so hopefully she won't be too far back and she'll still be able to kind of pick up the pace at some point. Lucille Germain as well from Team Matrix, uh, CDS Matrix actually, the, the team has evolved this year to a much bigger team. Uh, Joan Astrom, uh, Eleanor Davis as well, I'm surprised, I was hoping that, uh, to see her uh, a bit further up uh, in the front, the two Elcott sisters. Yeah, again, we have all the usual suspects with uh, a few few differences uh, pr based on uh, what I had originally imagined. Yeah, so the two Elcott sisters are uh, together. 
Yeah. And so there we go. So uh, it is a runner, I suspect, now who's on the uh, the single track. And it's awesome to see, um, <laughs> regardless of the weather, the temperature, the rain, the Norwegian public is here, is making some noise. Let's see if we can hear them a little bit. So uh, it's a runner now running with the camera, or is it a... I believe it's a runner at this point. I wonder how, uh, how far he's going to be able to follow the, the leaders. Uh, so that was a question actually we all asked ourselves, but uh, apparently the production team was very confident that they'd be able to keep up uh, for a long period of time, so we'll see. Um, I don't know, in the studios, if you can hear what's happening here and the cameras, just to have a, a little bit of an understanding of uh, how strong and how loud the public is. They have the Vuvuzela, I can, I can see in the images. Maybe not. That's too bad. We should have brought the Vuvuzela to make the ambiance noise as well. <laughs> And uh, Bar is still leading the men's field here uh, as we transition into this technical part. And I believe right behind him is still Andy Walker. There we go, that's one. Andy Walker now, David Manini, Fred Tranchant still well positioned here. And again, that mysterious runner that, sorry, we do not have his name. Well, we're trying to look hard for, for him. Uh, this is really cool to uh, to see uh, directly from the trail. I think we're gonna have 4G coverage uh, all the way. I mean, if we have camera guys that are able to follow the the runners all the way, we don't, we shouldn't have any issues with uh, with coverage. Yeah, it was quite impressive. We're out on the course, and, and yeah, yeah. You, you get reception pretty much everywhere. And there we go. Now they're closing in on um, on Bart here. It's uh, it's not time to make a move. This is the whole men's lead pack. Uh, Elusine Lazawi is closing it. It's about, about five men here in the lead. With all the usual suspects, ex except, except, uh, did I miss John? Yeah, I couldn't see John there. I think I missed John, yeah, he's, he's, he's not in that lead pack, so maybe he's just holding back slightly, because he knows that clearly he's going to be able to. So there we go, Elusine as well. Ahead, Fred Tranchant, David Manini. Uh, yeah, that's that's our pack. So we don't know. Like maybe just behind um, our camera runner, uh, you will be able to find uh, John Alban. I know that was the case actually in the Mont Blanc Marathon. Uh, we were filming uh, the top two runners from Kenya, and uh, we were thinking they were pulling away and far ahead. But as soon as the camera runner turned around, actually right on their heels was John Alban just sitting there. Um, so now I don't know if he's turned around. And, and he's we, wearing a green T-shirt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there we go. Adrien Michaud, Tim Scott, right here, having a pretty good uh, start of the race. Yeah, people are asking, uh, where is Kilian? And I suspect Kilian is the cameraman. <laughs> <laughs> no, because ah, oh, there we go. Manuel Merias, ladies and gentlemen, you need to remember that silhouette, that T-shirt, because as soon as we hit technical, this is where he's going to blow up the field, I believe. Or well, at least it will be interesting because. We have been promised to have segments and splits for all the runners, uh, intermediary ranking, and to see who was fast on uh, kind of the uphill, the technical, the downhill. Uh, so it'll be good to see here. Roberto De Lorenzi from Switzerland, I was saying he's also a very, very strong silent runner. And right behind is our man, John Alban. Uh, so he's about like 20 seconds back, and, but there you go. They're, they're the, the chasing pack. And they still have the leaders at sight, and he looks very controlled, really, really very relaxed. So um, yeah, he's playing it smart. Yep, yeah, no, no yeah. nothing to worry about right now. It's uh, there's no nothing wrong going on. He's just staying in control. And Thibaut Baronio as well, always very smart runner. He has a lot of years of experience, and uh, he knows that there's no point trying to get too excited at the start. Uh, then we got uh, Marcin as well, Said, Said Al Malik. He's a really strong downhill uh, runner, oh, Zaid, yeah. Zaid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, in, in Limoni, remember that year yeah. uh, he, where we had all eyes on um, on Killian going down and actually talking with Killian afterwards, he's like, no, actually, uh, I, I was looking like I was going fast, but Zaid was faster than me, yeah, yeah. had a faster split. 
So there we go, Adrien Michaud, Tim Scott, uh, also, um, <laughs> I don't want to say veteran because he, he, he will get offended. Uh, no, he won't because he has the greatest sense of humor, but he is not the youngest man on the field and yet he's proven that he can definitely have some longevity. And it, this is also going to be one of the runners who will be going rather fast than uh, taking it easy on the technical part. And I know, I know, we're, we're all like building up this hype around the technical part, but you will see. You will see how crazy uh, it is and how significant uh, it is for the overall ranking um, in both men's and women's. I think there is a bit of a uh, problem here because I doubt. Yeah, there we go. I was like, there's no 30 seconds between Bart uh, Predoreski and Davide Manini. There's no way. Uh, so I think you can take into account the ranking, the absolute ranking, but the split, the, the times between the runners, I don't think they're actually uh, accurate. Okay. Okay. You see how he keeps, keeps yeah, changing. John, John isn't three minutes and 30 seconds behind. No, no. If there is 30, 40 seconds, that's that's maximum. We could see that he he could see the lead pack. So that's uh, that's as much as he would be uh, further behind. And so um, I don't know if our camera runner just uh, blew a fuse here or if he's waiting for <laughs> the the women's field. I but think I think that's the case because these guys are so fast. Uh, but at least we'll we'll pull back a little bit. We see the. You, you can see the terrain. I mean, that, that actually, at least that gives you a chance to see the terrain. And it was interesting because, I mean, this is your home. But coming from, from France, for example, like, I could actually not tell if you dropped me here in which country I would be. Because sometimes it looks like Scotland. Sometimes it looks like Iceland. Um, uh, th there were even places where I felt like I was in the U.S. Uh, on the backside of the, the fun run we did yesterday. Like, very well-built tra uh, trails and some pine trees. Uh, so it's pretty cool to have this very, very, uh, how do you say, various? Yeah, versatile, yeah. versatile um, vegetation. Oh, there we go. We got a split screen, men's race. So, yep, uh, our camera runner has a bit dropped from the from the top. And um, we have now the leaders. And this is still Sofia. Sofia in the women's field leading. Um, and as per the GPS tracking, um, Sarah Alonso from Spain should be very close behind. And I think they're running together with uh, a local uh, guy. His name is uh, Jonas Hestok. I like to call him uh, the the Fjord Ranger. He's been working as um, clearing trails in the area all summer. Oh, wow. He's, uh, so he's the man to follow. He is. So and you I, don't I, get lost. I actually I have him on my, uh, my top 15 list because he's uh, really good at uh, downhills. Uh, I, I did the course with him uh, last week and uh, he, he looks super strong. Oh, awesome. Awesome. Thanks for that insight. <laughs> that's, that's the kind of stuff I would not know. Sure. The Fjord Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, just a quick note uh, to the studio. So this is not for, for you, the audience, but we have a black screen on the top left of our screen. If it is possible to remove that uh, so we can see the whole screen, because sometimes we're missing out on some runners or actually right now we do not see uh, the front of the pack. So we can guess that Emily Forsberg and Caitlin Fielder are together, but we're missing the top runners. And then... Uh, uh, So Sarah Alonso is now a bit further back, I suppose, but we still don't see. We have the that black screen, so I don't know if he can go uh, away or not. And um, but yeah, we're back with with the images. The lead of the women's race. This is exciting uh, to see that she went for it. No fear. This is one of her like this is definitely her first participation um, in uh, in a going to World Series race. She won uh, for those who are listening to us from uh, stateside. She's won Broken Arrow race, uh, which is. Uh, from a U.S. standards, like quite uh, a, a technical race, but it's nowhere near as technical as what we'll have uh, here today. Uh, and, and it's good to see her like giving it a go and uh, and gunning for it right from the beginning. So maybe she's not even sprinting. Maybe that's just her pace, and she's uh, a, a notch higher the the rest of the field. But I'm interested to see how far back the other ladies are because, like I said, we only see forward and maybe straight behind. There is a, a string of uh, more female runners just behind and on the right we're back with the men's race i feel like we've pulled back a little bit yeah we see uh, saeed Ait malik in the red here and uh, i don't know who the the yellow runner is i think he's uh is one of uh bart's friends also quite a, a strong runner and very friendly 
Yeah, we're getting uh, soon above the, the tree line. I think the tree line is uh, around maybe 700 or 800 meters above sea level. That's also where the first uh, aid station is, approximately. Yeah, you can see it's clearing up here. So, so correct me if I'm wrong because I didn't get the chance to do that very specific part of the course. But they'll go up to some 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 summit and then drop down a little bit yeah. and then back up slightly to the aid station. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah. Yep. So this is uh, we're approaching a place called uh, Lia Varden, uh, which is uh, which means um, or translated to um, a cairn in the side of the of the mountain. Oh, yeah. Kind of give people the indication of where to go. Yeah, and the, you can see people are running with, uh, a lot of them are running with uh, packs. There's a, a big uh, mandatory equipment uh, list for such a small race, and that's that's uh, purely because of the, the conditions. Yeah, true. Yeah. Uh, I think it's a very good point to mention, because usually we see runners, well, first, having singlets or short uh, sleeve t-shirts, wearing the minimum amount of gear, and then having the mandatory gear in their pack. Here, you can see they're all wearing it, uh, because again, uh, and I did, know, that, did not know that, and if you weren't with us at the time, like Hans was explaining, that it's going to be uh, two degrees uh, um, centigrade Celsius, uh, up at the top, and with the the windshield is going to be freeze like uh, the um, the windshield will be below zero, so that's freezing temperature. So um, I think it's a good move for all these runners to be wearing long sleeves and, and gloves, because again the energy expenditure when you're trying to warm your body up is uh, is very very significant. Yeah, and this this 25k race is uh, part of a bigger uh, race weekend here in in Stranda. They also have a 48 and 100k, and yep. yesterday there was a 12k. And they actually had to change the course of the 100k because of the weather conditions. They were oh. going actually going up to a mountain called uh, Slugen, and uh, they had to cut that mountain off off the course. Oh wow! Yeah, too gnarly. I think they had uh, like uh, 40 centimeters of snow. Wow, that's a insane. couple of nights ago. Yeah. So yeah, if you're listening to to this live uh, from um, from Western Europe, where the heat waves <laughs> are are yeah. striking, this is this is still planet Earth, <laughs> and we are still uh, not too far actually. Still in Europe, uh, a bit further north, and uh, and yeah, we do have freezing temperatures here in snow. I met some tourists uh, the other day. They they came to to this area because it's cold here. They came from Spain. Oh. So it's uh, that's a shift in tourism. Come to Norway. It's cold here. <laughs> yeah, it's interesting because it, it used to be as like, okay, people were looking to retire in the sun, in the warm, and now it's just too hot. <laughs> so, so they're actually betting on, on global warming and it's like, okay, well, in, you know, 10 years, 20 years, it's going to be nice and, and sunny. There's going to be palm trees on this course. <laughs> yeah, and now we're getting a taste of the technicality of the course here. And um, yeah, yeah, it's to get slippery. starting to get muddy. And uh, it's the first uh, small downhill. And I'm looking at Sofia very carefully to kind of gauge uh, how strong she will be on technical. And she looks like she's moving extremely well. She's actually dropping her camera runner. Uh, so it is it is interesting. Maybe a, a, lo a lot of the women in the field underestimated how she could uh, she could run on technical, including myself. And so that would be a really awesome surprise to see her fly through the technical and realize that, like, yep, you didn't see that one coming. She's a pretty good uh, cross-country skier. Oh, she's, well. yeah, she, yeah, she's, um, I think she went to the Olympics. Now she, uh, her best uh, position in the World Cup, I think, is fifth place in uh, Val de Fiemme last winter. Okay, winter. so mm. don't listen to me. I'm talking rubbish. <laughs> <laughs> now, which is this uh, terrain is? Um, she's used to this. She, uh, I think, she lives partly in uh, Norway, just a couple of hours north of uh, Stranda. So, uh, uh, damn. So yeah. she, I, I missed that that information when we were chatting because she was talking about the U.S. and all the camps. Um, she was doing mainly for, for cross-country skiing, and so right now she is running and taking part in the a, in a World Series, Golden Trail World Series, but um, her sport at heart still is cross-country skiing at the minute, so we'll see after this race if she feels like she can actually uh, transition into that sport and potentially be even more successful. Yeah, you see Jonas here is making a gap on Sofia, 10 meters. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> okay, so hopefully we'll get another camera soon on the on the men's runners because I'm now I'm starting to 
get uh, curious about who's uh, who's in the, in the lead potentially if this is still uh, the the same configuration with Bart in the lead pushing the pace or it looked as though um oh, I'm losing the, my names right now I need to take a breather Andy Walker Andy Walker was kind of catching up uh, to Bart when we had the last images together with Davide Manini so perhaps uh, they've they've gathered perhaps they've passed each other so I'm totally speculating I don't know but uh this is this is very exciting. We in, in, before we launched the live, we had a conversation uh, about Sofia. I'm like, oh yeah, this is definitely one to look for, and one we're not used to seeing uh, in the Grand Prix World Series, but has potential. And uh, she definitely delivers so far, as uh, she is 5k into the race, um, and uh, and hopefully a camera runner can keep up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I mean. It doesn't really matter who's first to the top because everything can happen after that. Everything and anything can happen. Uh, we, we again talked about this in, um, in the press conference yesterday. And, and again, <laughs> like I was saying earlier, there's only uh, Manuel Merias who's like, finally bring me some downhill and some technical <laughs> on rocks. And uh, actually, he was together with John Alban and uh, Bart uh, Predoreski. And they were all asked the question, um, okay, if the three of you get to the top together, mm -hmm. what happens? <laughs> and so they all had different answers, like, well, you know, we'll do our, <laughs> we'll do our things, uh, we'll see where it goes. And then Manuel, he said, because um, he, he, he doesn't really speak English, but he answered in Spanish, he's like, disfrutamos. It means like, we will enjoy that. <laughs> and, and you could see the smile on his face, like he was exciting, like, like kids uh, pulling like a, a, a foot race. Uh, on the school break playground, he's like, yeah, it's going to be fun. We're <laughs> just going to go for it. Did you see the graphics on the screen there? Uh, I can, so, again, if we're talking back to the studio, uh, if you can take out that black screen on the top left corner of our screen, uh, that would allow us to see the, the whole ranking when we pull out the, the GPS trackers because we could not see the, the leaders. What did, you, what did you see there? No, I think uh, Forsberg is not far behind. Oh, there we go. It's not unexpected. So we'll see that. So, were there two names with Caitlin still with her at that point? I, I didn't see. You didn't see? No, so. Okay. And you see, the, the more we go up, the thicker the fog becomes as well. So, uh, we're hoping that it's still going to be manageable because if there's fog, potentially there's not much uh, wind, but that's not even a guarantee. And the second woman is still Sir Alonso. There we go. Jeez. <laughs> there we go. I, I was telling you about, like, you know, heat management and saving your energy and trying to not to get cold. And there we go. Sir Alonso wearing nothing but <laughs> sports bra um, as per usual. And uh, it, it was funny because we asked her the question as well during the, uh, the athlete presentation, the press conference. Like, well, you know, it's going to be colder. So um, uh, <laughs> will you wear a T-shirt this time? And she was like, look. When I wear a t-shirt and it gets wet, then it sticks to me, it's heavy, and it's actually cool, it's cooling me down even more. I mean, skin is waterproof, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly. It's the best, skin uh, is waterproof. best, best, best base layer. Uh, so hopefully she, she made the right move, but she is going pretty strong here. I, I, I'm trying to see if, um, if we can see in the distance Sofia and how much of the gap there is between the two leaders of the women's race right now. Uh, but Sarah Alonso is definitely uh, in full gas mode, hiking away on uh, those rocks that are bigger and bigger. And again, like I was saying, hopefully there is not too much wind up at the top. And I'm hoping that for two reasons. First, because it's going to be less um, tricky for the runners and less cold, so we'll see better performances. But as well as for us and for you, because if there's too much wind, the drone pilot that's up there to offer you like pretty sick images of the summit, he won't be able to fly. So if there's no wind, we're in for a treat and you'll get a full um, like overview of, of that terrain, of that highest peak, the out and back, and then down to the saddle, back to the second highest peak, and then down as well. Uh, so we'll, we'll see how it goes, but then again, you see like almost like close to like 100% humidity. Um, like even the, the fog or the raindrops are coming onto the front of the camera here uh, in our camera runner. Hopefully we can switch back. Uh, so we have Sophie, Sarah Alonso and Blondin Leondel. Blondin Leondel together with, uh, yeah, Emily Forsberg um, or Bailey Kowalski. Um, 
Yeah, I got some uh, inside info from uh, Niklas Svensru on the YouTube uh, uh, great. chat. Great, thank you. What did he, he get? He said, uh, luckily, she won the, um, the women's Lysefjorn Opp, which is a roller skiing oh, race. Oh, yeah, a few days yeah. ago. Yeah, yeah That's on, right. on Wednesday yeah, this I, week. I knew she had, ra had done a roller ski race, but I didn't realize she had actually won it. <laughs> yeah, she's got a big engine. <laughs> <laughs> what a machine. Yeah. And it's good also, it shows that mentally she's prepared um, and she feels confident because, you know, if you're not 100% confident in your strength and abilities, you'd be like, well, maybe I'm going to save myself the week prior. But no, she goes out and, uh, and race hard in a rolls key uh, race and actually wins it. So, again, uh, for those not necessarily familiar with rolls key uh, races, uh, that's super brutal on the engine, uh, on, the, on the kind of the lactates and the, the breathing and all that, but on the muscles, you can actually recover pretty quickly yeah. from that. Yeah. And uh, here we see Sarah starting to uh, get challenged a little bit by the elements. I think there was a bit of a slippage here. Uh, and we're getting to, uh, I, I would not even attempt to pronounce the top of that summit, but it says the Kern. <laughs> <laughs> let me uh, let me try. Um, oh yeah, Lia Varden. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah which is 800 meters above sea level. And they started almost uh, around uh, zero meters, I mean, at, at the fjord level. So they've been climbing for about 800, 800. Yeah. Okay, so there we go. We got Davide Manigny, Lusinella Zawi, uh, Bart, uh, still in the lead. Okay, Bart's in the lead, and Davide Manigny and Elusin are together in second and third, right behind Fred Tranchant, John Alban. Roberto De Lorenzi just shortly uh, behind Manuel Merias, still in the game. It's pretty good. I'm glad to see him here because we want to see him go neck to neck with the likes of Bart and uh, and John. I do not see, however, so hopefully this is um, a GPS tracker failure um, uh, on uh, on D Walker. Ah, oh, no, there he is. So he is dropping back. Wow. Yeah, he's he said uh, in an interview yesterday that uh, he has never run on mud in his whole life that's true that's true <laughs> coming from colorado where yeah. everything is dry yeah either it snows or it's dry uh well then it shows that that has turned uh, into a challenge for the american runner i was personally really thinking that uh, all the way up until uh, the 8k mark that he would potentially be leading the field but nope it is uh, it is bart and um something we mentioned as well during the the press conference yesterday uh asking the question to bart he kind of came out on, onto the scene in the um, in the very first year of the Golden Trail World Series, and the final was in South Africa. So he had made the cut into the top ten, but kind of flying under the radar. And there was the press conference with all the kind of elite athletes we all know and uh, we're familiar with seeing in the front. And then come comes this guy with a broken English, and I was like, okay, well, I, I, we ask a question to everyone. So he's like, oh, Barton, how, how do you think you, you're going to do tomorrow? And he's like. Um, Oh, I, I am going to win. <laughs> and everybody fucking cracks up laughing. Like, oh, there's no way this is happening. Uh, but like, okay. And then at the start, same configuration. He, boom, pulled away right from the start and then start pulling away from the pack. And it was a marathon. Uh, and so everybody's just like looking at each other. It's like, oh, what is he doing? Oh, okay, we, we'll reel him up. No chance. <laughs> like, no chance. His, uh, no, no chance he's staying ahead. And, and, uh, and, um, and so it, it was actually super interesting because he actually stayed in lead and won by a few minutes and they never saw him again. And so I asked him the question uh, yesterday and I was like, well, is that going to be the exact same, um, is it going to be the same scenario? And he just smiled and said, I am uh, in one of the best shapes I've been and uh, yeah, uh, I'm going to try to win. <laughs> so. Uh, so that's that's going to be that's going to be hopefully something we'll see, but um, definitely want to see a battle. So I believe we have another interview um, with another runner. So we're going to branch into that uh, just now. Back up. So I'll see. <laughs> I was going to uh, wash my hands after everyone touching them, you know. You can wash them up. John Bonabon. <laughs> Most viewers at home. <laughs> See you anymore. Has he been drinking? Most, <laughs> Most viewers at home are unaware that you, uh, you're the, the lead singer of a tribute band, Bon Album, to, uh, the lead, uh, to, to Bon Jovi. 
So um, yeah. I was wondering, do you think that the conditions tomorrow are going to be slippery when wet? It's a Bon Jovi album. It's a Bon Jovi album. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. And <laughs> are, are you slippery good? When So uh, yeah, there's uh, a lot of uh, weirdness going on, and but we always try to keep it fresh. And uh, I mean, those athletes are like pretty uh, confident on their feet, and so it's always fun to challenge them a little bit with uh, wacky interviews. Um, we had a little bit of an update here. Uh, our good friend from the field, Albert Jorquera, who had the, um, the pleasure to share some live coverage with uh, at the first checkpoint. So Sofia Locley, we saw on the screen a lot. Uh, Sarah Alonso, again, no surprise here. But then was coming Blondine Lirondel, um, Bailey Kowalski, who, no, Bailey was in fifth. It was Greta Vasset. Do you know her? Uh, in fourth? Greta Vasset. Greta Vasset. No, I don't. Okay. No. And then Emily Forsberg, Caitlin Fielder, Julie Roux, Kimber Mattox, and Iris Pesse for the top ten in the women's. Uh, but the, uh, we, we are being told that uh, that was a while back, so maybe it has changed a little bit. And uh, again, we um, we have that kind of information. So it's interesting because now we have uh, on the screen the women's, and it looks as though uh, oh, it's hard. So, uh, so Sophia Lukli has already started dropping down, and then the other lady, Blondine Leondel, Emily Forsberg, Sarah, uh, Sarah Alonso must be through the mountain on the other side. Uh, it's not uh, the best angle to tell you, but basically, all the runners, we expect to see their Caitlin Fielder slightly back. Elise Ponce, who again, another mountain runner, second at the World Champs um, in 2020 or 2019, uh, mountain running World Champs in Argentina. Um, I was expecting her to be actually in the lead as well, taking advantage of what is the non-technical part of this race. But again, she proved me wrong. Yeah, we should watch out for the the, the ones that are really good uh, downhill runners as well. I mean, the, the Elcott sisters are uh, good downhill runners. Uh, Johanna Ostrom as well and uh, Henriette Alban. Yes, true. Yeah. And, and that's what's exciting about this race, as we were seeing uh, like, uh, shortly after this, the, the start is that the, the, the duration uh, from a time perspective spent going up and then spent going down is actually equal while most of the time you have much less time uh, going down than going up because obviously you're slower uh, going up. So as, as you rightfully so said, uh, those who are strong descender, they will have the chance to uh, reel in whoever is ahead or open up an even more significant gap uh, on their competitors. So, whoever, uh, and, and you said it again, whoever will be first at the top has no guarantee whatsoever to be first at the finish. No, no, no. Far from it. Far from it. And so stay with us until the end because we're going to see some changes. And again, there's going to be the technical downhill. Then there's going to be the bug uh, <laughs> that probably going to create some surprise as well. And if, if some, some runners try to go hard through that, they're going to leave a lot of energy out there and therefore potentially run on fumes for the last part. However, you have, you absolutely have to be strong for the last part because even though there's mud and it's slippery, then it turns into a track that you can actually push really hard on. You will still um, take chances and potentially fall, but definitely you can push the pace uh, much more than what you would uh, in the previous section. And then we have the last two kilometers on first, maybe 500 on a dirt road and then just on road. Mm. Uh, so again, you, you, you better have wheels and be prepared to hurt because after all this downhill, your quads are going to be blasted and you still have to run 2Ks on the road and that's going to be painful. But at this point, you, there's no looking back. It's just full gas, full <laughs> gas to the finish. I'm keeping one eye on the, on the live chat. So if you guys have any questions, uh, I'd be happy to answer. Seriously. <laughs> <laughs> so there he uh, goes. Alban is up on front with uh, Magnini and Tranchard. Yeah, he probably made up that gap uh, in the small downhill. And now they're soon approaching the, the super technical um, scrambling part. They uh, are going to have to use their hands. I think there, um, there are some chains up there as well. 
Yeah, no, yeah. That, that's that's quite interesting. So obviously they don't like the track feels like it's bleeding down uh, the side, but it's just because it's r they're running on the edge uh, on that section before going back uh, kind of into the mountain. That, that what that gray area is just a massive boulder field, but not the one we used to see like in the Alps where it's kind of small, uh, like as big as maybe fist size uh, rocks. No, they're way bigger. Some are moving, some are not moving. And uh, there's just simply no way to run that part, regardless of how strong you are. So there's going to be power hiking, hands on knees, potentially hands on rock, straight, a bit of scrambling, um, and then popping, popping into the the ridge for the out and back to the to the highest summit, and then uh, back onto the saddle. So we're only getting started. Yeah, this, yeah, is, this yeah. is super exciting. Like, there's so much that's left to happen in this race, third race of the Golden Trail World Series. And uh, yeah, again, if you have a lot of uh, comment, excitement, just share wherever you, wh wh okay, which country are you following from right now? Let us know. We want to see like, who's the most active uh, here with us on, uh, on this live. I saw we had some from uh, Costa Rica. Ah, Pura Vida. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I saw also um, uh, Anders Tjerevik is not far behind. Uh, and I mean, if he's just a couple of minutes behind the leader at the top, he could, he could just blast catch up. down to the finish, awesome, and win the whole race. And, and, uh, and we we saw also um, the guy I was mentioning earlier, the Fjord Ranger. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Jonas Hester, he's also right behind um, Anders Sjervik. So um, we These have. These two a, good. Uh, yeah, 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 definitely. So here, who's uh, pulling away from our camera runner is Elise Ponce. She's the, she's the one I was hoping to see a little bit further up the field at first. And, um, but who knows, like sh she has wheels and she can run fast. So potentially in the second part of the downhill, uh, she can actually uh, reel in some of the ladies ahead of her. But she <laughs> definitely has enough gas in the tank to drop our camera runner. So we're probably like in the lower top 10 uh, of the women's field right now. Uh, getting to uh, to the first summit before dropping down uh, and into the a little bit further there uh, the men's are actually close to the aid station now eight kilometers and it's another 700 meters for the uh, lead female people are watching from all over the world we have sweden spain poland germany peru Col colorado peru japan france Holland, Romania, New Zealand, go Kiwis, Czech Republic. <laughs> That's Nor awesome. Norway, Macedonia, India. Wow, we got everyone. Yeah, Thank everyone. you so much for being with us. This is great. Uh, and okay, back on the GPS tracker. So basically, we've equipped all the runners with a small GPS tracker like, in their packs. And uh, that's how we can actually la have the live um, updates. We see them moving instantly. We have some uh, updates from uh, Albert. From Albert. Yeah. So at the checkpoint. Yeah, so Andy Walker was already almost two minutes back in 10th position. Manuel Merias, uh, 1 minute 20. Thibaut Barnier, 39 seconds. So yeah, there's a bit of a gap between 8th uh, and 9th. Like Thibaut being 40 seconds back is close to nothing. It can be made up like very, very quickly. Okay, and who was uh, the lady who was second right now in the course? Uh, it, it's hard to tell because right now we see the tag of Blondine Lirondel, but coming from Spain and a recent winner of the Mont Blanc Marathon, Sarah Alonso, we have a little bit of an interview with her uh, so you can a uh, little bit get acquainted with who she is. Let's watch it now. We found Sarah. We're, we're pretending we've never gone away, so Sarah. Hi. Mont it's Blanc. Low, eh, please. Mont, Blanc. Mont Blanc. You were running down the hill and you saw the cameraman and you fell over. Yes. Is there a danger that the cameramen are too sexy? <laughs> exactly, but the cameraman was behind, it was the public one. Oh, <laughs> no! It's not the cameraman, it's the <laughs> other people. Oh, brutal, brutal. How do you feel, cameraman? You can okay, so we're back on the course, and uh, if you, this oh, this is a bit of an in, um, inside joke uh, because both actually Sarah and uh, John Allen 
in the Mont Blanc Marathon uh, fell in the same spot and, and we thought that that was because there was a change of camera runners and so they all looked up and, <laughs> and actually took a tumble and were like face planted on the track. Um, um, so he asked like, oh, was it because the, the, the camera runner was too hot? Uh, but she actually said that it was someone in the public. So if you're out there right now, maybe um, cheer her on. There we go. There she is, Sarah Alonso. Whoa, that's exactly her. So this is the attitude I was telling you about. She will go full gas, and no, no matter what happens, she will slip. She will fall. She will take uh, her hands on the ground. Doesn't matter. She will just keep tracking forward. And so uh, I don't know if anyone on the field has the actual split between... Um, Sophia and Sarah, that's going to be very interesting to, to see uh, the difference between these two front ladies. And then uh, it's also good, I'm, I'm glad because I know her, she's from France, she's a great athlete but an even better person. Uh, she's a, a doctor, gynecologist in real life, Blondine Lirondel, uh, 2019 Trail World Champion. Um, she is, if the GPS tracker are accurate, she's in third place and so it means that she is uh, running very very strong and uh, she as I was telling you if you weren't with us before the start that she was a bit con um, concerned about the technical part so she's definitely uh, making an effort right now and uh, and trying to be in the first position before they hit that I wonder if the the trail I mean the trail must be getting worse uh, if you if you're in the back Absolutely, when and, and, and lots of people have been uh, running it in front of you. But and, and so this is something we actually realized um, yesterday or two days ago when we were running on the course. Because mm -hmm. even a few people, it made a difference. But actually, correct me if I'm wrong. But the, the runners doing the 50, the longer race, yeah, 48k, 48k, yeah, they do that loop. And yeah, they they're did doing it. the same one. And so there was 250 runners this morning who did that loop already. Uh huh. Okay. okay <laughs> and okay. so that's going to make the descent in the mud even more interesting. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, in the downhill, you're you're gonna see people probably not choosing to run on the trail. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, t tell us why. Yeah, because uh, the grip is better off the trail, and that's uh, that can be interesting to to watch out for. Because uh, I know a lot of, uh, for example, Americans, they are used to having to stay on the trail because they run on national parks. Yes. And so it's not yes. allowed to run off the trail. But uh, here in Norway, we can do pretty much whatever we want but uh, of course we have to stay on the course uh, which is marked with the flag yeah, so yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but like you can take uh, a meter on the right a meter on the left side and cut some corners but um <laughs> yeah and sometimes there's not even a trail <laughs> right right <laughs> and sometimes what seems to be the trail is just a river mm. and, and you might just follow the river because it, it seems natural but uh it's it's better just to stay on the grass on yeah. the side. And I know what you're talking about. <laughs> I went knee deep in one and I just face planted in the moss. Luckily, that was soft moss, so that was all right. So, okay, it looks like as though they have started hitting the steep section. So we didn't have images of them going through the first aid station. And now we have Eluzin Elazawi, David Emanini, Bartolo, Meo, Predowitsky, John Alban, Fren Tranchant, and Roberto Dolorenzi. These are our six top runners right now. Manuel Miriez also finally catching up. He's closing in. He must be smiling right now. He is in his element. And then uh, slightly behind, I can guess, Adrien Michaud. Uh, and I don't know what. Uh, oh, there we go, Andy Walker. Um, Andrew, I do not know this name. Zaid, uh, Zaid also at Malik and um, Anders. There we go, Anders Pony, <laughs> as we know him. Um, definitely a step back, but pr probably still at reach. Yep. Who knows? Yeah. And talking about um, Manuel Merias. Uh, this, we gotta have a little video clip for you to watch and uh, again it's a massive gamble on what David is gonna ask them and how relevant <laughs> it's gonna be with this race but let's watch it now Zagama, 12 kilometers in, you were in 19th place and you came third. Tomorrow, 12 kilometers in, what place will you be? Espero no estar muy lejos de cabeza. No sé la posición, pero 
lo más cerca posible de, de la cabeza. I don't speak Spanish, but I think he went number one, peeps, number one in your face. That's what he said. He said, suck it, John Alban. I believe in Spanish. <laughs> suck it, John Alban. <laughs> And there we go, we, we should have the restricted logo here yeah, we'll for this about, live coverage. We'll see about that. Um, so, no, no, but like, he clearly did not say that. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, like, so for those who don't know Manuel Merias, he's a very humble runner. And, and he would absolutely never say that. Okay, okay. Uh, yeah. So that's David making up and steering the shit. Um, but Manu, I, I don't know what he said, but the information that is interesting here to, to know and to understand is um, that Manu Mirias at Zegama uh, was 19th after 12 kilometer, and then he reeled in uh, to finish in the top 10 uh, in a very, very strong race. Uh, so now it's going to be interesting to see. And he asked, well, "Where are you going to be?" And uh, I don't, I don't know what he said because I, uh, I couldn't quite hear what he said in Spanish. Um, but uh, but yeah, he's definitely going to be in the lead. And we have the images now—the drone images, I believe. Is it the out and back yet? No, not yet. No, no. Okay, no. they're they're going soon, into the rock soon. wall. Yeah, That's and right. we actually saw a guy running with poles. And we had a question in the in the live uh, chat here. This might be one of our photographer. Oh, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> With the no, yellow and, and blue. There, there was a guy who asked if they're allowed to use poles, and yes, they are, but uh, I, I wouldn't use them. They, you would maybe uh, be able to use them for maybe a, a kilometer, and for the rest of the, ra the race, they're just uh, dead weight. Yeah, because you see them running now, but that's going to very quickly transition into hiking, power hiking, and, yeah. and, uh, and, and holding the ground as the, the gradient gets, uh, gets steeper. Uh, so now it's a pure guessing, guessing game here, uh, still running in the front. I think in second place, that's John Albon hiking. He's an extremely strong hiker. Um, I believe Elusin Lazawi in third in that first group, and I believe still running, therefore, in first. Bartolome, pretty risky. I'm, uh, I'm going to try and keep up with his name, but that's, that's not going to be the easiest part. I think in fourth is Fred Tranchant. Who, and it's very exciting to see him. If, if he's so close, that's, that's perfect because there we go. The running is over for a while, ladies and gentlemen, because now they're going straight into that rock wall, that um, kind of boulder field that will actually last for a while because you see here on the 3D images, they're only at the bottom of it and, and it looks pretty intense. Manuel Mirias also catching up Roberto De Lorenzi uh, slightly ahead of him and I think I was right I was just missing Davide Manini so maybe Davide Manini was in fourth there we go and Fred Tranchant is actually white sleeves I gotta remember that white sleeve so Fred Tranchant is in fifth and Davide Manini is still in fourth uh, of this men's race boy this is exciting it's super this, exciting oh there's gonna be so much going on because <laughs> that's what we wanted. We wanted to have the top runners, those who were very strong on technical, to not actually uh, take it easy on the technical, but actually push each other and go extremely hard. And by the look of it, this is exactly what's going to happen. And so, yeah, we see uh, Roberto De Lorenzi here at the bottom of your screen. We still have, haven't identified this runner with the red T-shirt and then with the white sleeves. Uh, I struggle. I do not remember who had white sleeves. <clears throat> But you see, as the drone kind of steps back a little bit to give you a, a, a deeper overview of that course, it is absolutely insane. And when we talked about having no trail, there is absolutely nothing there. And uh, it's only uh, little flags that the runners have to follow to kind of get an idea of the, the, the direction, the trajectory they need to take. And so this is another thing that will favor Fred Tranchant, who's orienteering um, who's been running orienteering races at the highest level for years is basically he's used to not having a marked course looking at a map and so he will be able to look up and look at his feet to make sure he takes the best possible trajectory and uh, and you know one meter left one meter right sometimes it makes a bit of a difference so again I suspect that he could do really really well which is again exciting I don't think there's been ever a race in the Golden Trail World Series where they could be like five six even seven people who could actually take the lead usually we have an idea of like the top two top three but this is this is still in the cards and again like people who are the strongest on paper like if they push a little too hard and they take a tumble that could be game over yeah if you take a tumble on, on the first downhill here i mean that could be not only game over for for this race but um, for, the for the season and 
maybe next season. <laughs> so, so, so there's a lot at stake here because they have a lot to lose. Uh, but we know these these people are competitors, and and if you're been racing yourself, you know that when you have a beep number on, you're in race mode. You actually do not pay attention too much uh, to what's going on. And we have now uh, oh, this is uh, another live feed coming from one of our camera runner because everybody's trying to. Gearing, uh, gear up and get ready because there's camera runners and mountain bikers as well as drones that you can see right now uh, everywhere on the course to offer you these images uh, so we turn it around and uh, now it's going to be hard to um, see whether we have the women's or that's still the rest of the top 10 men's uh, going up that uh, scree field I mean the weather is pretty bad it's a shame we can't see the fjords and everything but this is also pretty cool it is really cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think I think all the athletes were really stoked to to be able to come here and to have such a technical race uh, in in the circuit because then uh, there's CRC now, so that's nowhere near technical. It's like extra, like basically who has the biggest engine and actually who can run fast even on flat, even though it's almost always uphill. You need very very fast legs. And then the two races in the U.S., the last two of the series, that's going to be uh, the very legendary Pikes Peak Ascent in Colorado. And uh, we'll finish the week after with um, the Flagstaff Sky Peaks in Flagstaff, Arizona. And this one might actually be technical because we know the race uh, organizer um, and he certainly uh, wants to challenge the runners. He's been briefed for a non-American, and I'm doing quote-unquote race, uh, to offer some technical stuff. And so I think there's going to be a um, same, uh, same similar section going up the field uh, without any trail. But back to Norway, back to Stronda, uh, where we see the runners making their way up to the highest point and to the technical part. Here you have the split in the men's and hopefully we'll get an update of the women's who are only about 500 meters back uh, from the, the men's leader. So that's really not that much. However, with such elevation, that's quite a bit of a few minutes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you can see John here. He's uh, up front. He told me yesterday that uh, a lot of the, the, the people traveling to this race, they are... Um, what do you call they they like to cut the crust off the bread yes so they, they run on, on, on about nice this expression they uh they only run on nice trails and good weather but john said he lives on the crust <laughs> so, so, so for you to understand this image is like you know you have like the the, the flat uh, square pieces of bread uh that you 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 you, you shouldn't actually eat really because white bread is, is not the best but essentially you <laughs> have the, the very white square bread and um and then on the side you've got the crust and yeah. it says like you know people who are like a little bit um like tender let's say uh, you say oh no they cut the crust off and they only want to eat the soft fluffy white part in the middle mm -hmm. he says like i'm all about the crust i'm yeah. all about the side i'm all about the edges he lives on the, the crust the, the rough terrain so he's excited and there we go we still have our uh, female leader uh, coming from the u.s but okay. um, as hans was explaining she actually lives uh, in the area quite a bit recent winner of um uh, a roller ski race uh, that took place in the area. Oh, actually, it wasn't in the area. I think she drove quite a ways. Yeah, it's pretty far, uh, far away. Yeah. Uh, Elisa Fjorn, uh, Elisa Botten up. That's the race, the name of the race. Yeah, and yeah. I think it was close to Oslo, wasn't it? And she, she, I think she drove quite uh, a, a few still hours. On, uh, yeah, it's, it's still on the west uh, side of the country, but it's okay. uh, because of all the fjords, even though the, um, in the. Um, on the map it doesn't look that far it takes a long uh, time to drive right right yeah. and so Sofia Lokli from uh, from America is still leading uh, the Tonda Fjord race 2022 and uh, but we're like she's about to hit the the bottom of that technical section so she'll still be able to run for another minute or so uh, even though the gradient is getting steeper and steeper, uh, but then it's going to be hand on knees, hand on rocks, a little bit of scrambling, picking your, your line. And this is where we can expect Sarah Alonso. And it's good to see that Emily Forsberg indeed is back close to the lead and Blondine Lirondel as well. So we'll see this. It's going to be super interesting. Hopefully we'll have uh, close up images of that. Maybe a camera runner who's still in the area uh, to see this woman co go through. Uh, and, and battling out. So it looks like she's got a bit of a lead still, uh, Sophia. But 
You remember the the guy 43B we were talking uh, about yes. earlier? Yeah, we, we got some uh, inside info from uh, a guy Neil called Jove. Neil Jove. He Thank said you. the mysterious red shirt runner is Juan Camilo. He's from a Colombia. Co co Colombian. Awesome. He's in seventh right now. So Go. Thanks, Neil. <laughs> Yeah, thank you so much, Neil Hove. And so, runner from Colombia, who's in, I mean, scoring a top 10 here in the World Series is, is out, absolutely outstanding. So we'll see, and especially from Colombia, I think they're also very familiar with technical terrain. I don't know how much about uh, wet, but definitely technical. And uh, I think he'll be breathing through his nose all the way up to the top. He won't be bothered by the altitude. Yeah, yeah. His, uh, his lungs are pretty, uh used to altitude and uh, I mean this is not altitude at all the the highest point here is about uh, is uh, right o right above uh, 1700 yeah yeah so yeah. yeah it should be all right yeah okay so we have images from the ground here let's see who we got is that the first oh no it was not the first woman because we had her go through Sofia already uh, but let's see if we can identify any runner they might be too far ready our camera runner might have gotten dropped she's she's I mean she has a big gap. She has a decent lead indeed. That's huge. That's about, right, let's say what, two minutes, two and a half? Let's see, we're, we're getting uh, updates. Okay, so Sarah Alonso in second, we got the information right, right now. She's four minutes back the female's leader, uh, Sophia Lokley. So that's, that's already a big gap indeed. And, and Emily, yeah. Emily Forsberg is uh, third. So to, then we're guessing um, Blondine Rondel is sitting in fourth, not too far back. Wow, four minutes. Uh, That's a lot. It's a lot. Mm. It's a lot indeed. So it, it, especially because as the race started, um, I was really mistaking and I thought she wouldn't be very comfortable on the technical. But I think she, she kept her cards close to her chest. And uh, when we ran together, she was really taking it easy uh, two days ago. Yeah, two days ago when we went and checked out this exact part of the route, actually. Uh, she's been on it. She's checked it out. She knows how it, how it is. And uh, if she can actually run through it, oh, man, yeah. uh, with four minutes lead, it will be interesting. You can see Johanna Ostrom is uh, quite far behind. Uh, she's uh, she's had COVID, f I think three weeks ago. Wow. And okay. She, uh, she still hasn't recovered fully, so um, that might be the reason. Yeah. Because yeah. normally she's up in the lead. There we go. We have our top runners here on the ridge. They're starting the out and back, so they've come on the ridge here. And uh, so the first guy is a camera runner. We're doing images as well because there's many other places where you'll be able to see this coverage. John uh, in the lead. Later. So John in the lead, followed by Davide Manini, Elusine Lazawi, and Bart Predireski. He's completing this top four. So I suppose we should see not too far back uh, Fred Tranchant, who was on the uh, drone images with these guys. But this is definitely where now John has made the move. I was going. I was curious actually to see whether he would make the move early or not, because essentially if he's leading, like that's going to be helping the other runners just to try and follow. And there we go. This is it. You know, like these guys have like the best skills in the business to run on technical and yet they are still sliding. It shows like how slippery uh, this, this terrain is. And the minute you try to be a little bit too intense on your footing and you slip. So when you go uphill, I'd say it's okay. Yeah, but everything but is okay uphill. But when you go downhill and you need to actually break to stop the momentum because you're going down, that's where things get ugly. The thing is, uh, the rocks are, are positioned so randomly here, so you can never relax. You can never relax, and then some are moving, some are not. So it's always a guessing game. Mm -hmm. And uh, and see, like, w one of these slippage every time, like you lose a lot of energy. So I think power hiking is potentially the name of the game on, on this in this area, because trying to run uh, requires a bit more power and therefore uh, more chances to slip. But it's good. So there, we have the drone images. Is this? Oh, I think I missed that. Damn. Uh, yeah, I mean, to see who was coming behind. It, it's pretty cool that we have an Alton back up here, because uh, then um, they're they're gonna know how far behind they are. Oh yeah, the there's, there's gonna be some like look on the corner of your eyes, like Definitely. okay, who, how's this guy doing? Maybe some high fives. Who knows? I think they're gonna try to hold on <laughs> to your life rather than giving high fives. <laughs> uh, but yeah, hopefully our camera, camera runner can keep up all the way to the top because it, it will be really interesting to see the behavior as they crest, they get to the, the antenna and, uh, and flip and uh, start the descent and therefore start uh, their effort going down. So now we have the rest of the field here that's, um, 
I think that's outside, shortly outside of the top 10 now. Uh, we're, we don't have the update. But uh, again, if you're joining us, uh, John Albon is in the lead. Second place, Davide Manini is still there. Davide Manini, uh, Elusine Lazawi, again, this is, this is a, a safe bet. He's always in the top three. He's been fourth and fourth at Zegama and uh, Mont Blanc Marathon, respectively. I uh, know that it actually matters. Um, and so he is there, and actually the cold is going to help him because he has always issues with digestion and drinking, and, and when he needs to drink, he actually gets sick. Well, he's not going to have any problem there because I don't think they're sweating much right now. <laughs> the, 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 the weather conditions here is pretty cold. So you were saying about 2 degrees uh, Celsius, and with uh, wind chill is minus 4. So definitely below freezing temperature. It's really cold here right now. I mean, now. You, you see the... The, the, the signs here, like the little tags, and they're absolutely <laughs> horizontal. So it, the wind must be actually blowing pretty hard. I don't know if uh, in the studio, um, I mean, we're going to hear probably that camera runner breathing extremely hard, but can we have the sound, the ambient sign of the summit so we can get a gauge of the, the wind? There we go. John Alban has turned around. Yeah, this is when the race really begins. So Bart, who was leading the race in the first part, now has uh, passed in fourth. And uh, yeah, we went that, there you Is go. The camera go camera going, runner, turn, turn around, turn around. Yeah. We got to follow now. <laughs> Show us your skills. Show us what you get. Yeah, and wipe. Oh, uh, no, we're not seeing that. Lines. Yep. OK, so we're going to see more runners come up. But essentially, the fight in the top four right now is on. There we go, as expected. Fred Tranchant is now in fifth position, not too far back, followed by Thibaut Barognan. Thibaut also doing a very smart race. Um, and he can, well, again, catch up because he always plans and, and spend his energy very mindfully. And he knows that he can be strong on the technical and therefore he's probably going to try and play his cards. And I think this is another very good move is uh, to be able to follow Fred Tranchant. He's going to have the perfect trajectory and then he's just going to have to hold on to him. And that's going to be a massive advantage to go down on that technical terrain. So he's just going to be able to relax and see which stone actually moves or not. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, he comes from orienteering. So his downhill is, uh, is pretty good. Yeah, extremely good. And this is, uh, again, I blanked on his name, but from Colombia, our our mysterious runner is back and is still in the seventh position extremely uh, strong so far and he looks like he's comfortable on downhill look at him fly yeah. down oh we could be surprised here i think it was there uh, roberto de lorenzi uh, then in eighth position going around and then here in the dark outfit would be cool to get some drone footage from the downhill yeah yeah if we can switch to the drone right now that would be awesome because then we can see uh, how quickly as well oh this is manuel merias Okay, so now if we can talk in the studio to the camera runner, he needs to run down. Okay. Uh, so can we tell the camera runner to run down with Manuel Merias, to run with this runner because it would be extremely good to be able to see how fast, look at him. This is, this is gonna be, to me, one of the fastest runner on this section, and you can see how quickly he disappears out in, in, um, in the fog. And speaking about fog, we've just been informed and uh, yeah, speaking about fog, we sadly cannot fly the drone in this environment. And as you can see, it's not necessarily the fog, but the wind. And you can see that little piece of, um, of ribbon here flying in the wind. And this is what's, uh, what's causing the fact that our drone pilot had to actually land because it was just too complicated to run in this environment. Uh, I had warned you that was, that was the gamble. We knew it, it was, uh, it was going to be an option. But looking at the time now, They've gone way faster. Yeah, I was just about to say that. Yeah, I mean they're they're about five minutes uh, down. Be, yeah, before I mean in front of uh, John's uh, predicted schedule. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it means that they've been pushing the pace pretty strong, pretty hard going up, and I believe they'll be pushing the pace even stronger and harder in the downhill. Um, yeah, because John took all the Strava segments in training. <laughs> last week, <laughs> yeah. and that's when he decided to come here and race because he originally wasn't signed up to race. No, no, yeah. it's true. It was a last-minute uh, decision for John, and uh, I think he also wanted to test himself because uh, he had COVID about five weeks ago. And I think it was the week after Mont Blanc Marathon. Yeah. And so he was like, oh, I, I need to kind of test the engine, test the, uh, how I like how I feel and how much impacted I have been physically and physiologically by COVID. And so he wanted this to be a test race. And <laughs> <laughs> seems like uh, it's a bit more than a test yeah, race. It seems like he's back. Yeah. 
<laughs> and so here you get a feel again of that long, uh, dreadful boulder field where essentially you have no chance to, to run. If you can do, pull up a little bit the camera here so we can see the runners. Um, yeah, there's no rubber that can stick on those rocks. Yeah, no. We, uh, when we did the Reiki, we all had different brands and none of them were sticking. No, no. Uh, yep, so here I hope you're not seasick because otherwise we <laughs> would advise you to look away from your screen. All right, go. There we go. We have now uh, our camera runner. He's running down uh, with probably the 10th runner, I, I suspect. And uh, John was telling us that as well yesterday. So this is Adrien Michaud here on the left coming up uh, and on the right with the white t-shirt. I am actually unsure of who that is. But John was telling us that even though you kind of drawn to run on the left side, it, the, the, uh, it's actually better uh, footing and better trail on the right side, like close to the edge. So hopefully a camera runner can, uh, can get this information so he can keep up because so far he's getting dropped. <laughs> I don't know how big the, the camera rig is. So it's about, it's, uh, like, uh, to... it's, it's about 5 kgs in the backpack. Okay. And then you have a handheld, and it's a GoPro, actually. All right. So it's, it's really not that heavy, but again, you have to be able to, one, aim um, to make sure your runners are in the frame, carry that extra weight, but for the downhill, it's no problem, and be able to run on technical. Here we have more female. That's Caitlin Filder from New Zealand running for uh, Salomon and Buff. And then I think together is, um, oh, I'm blanking here, from Team Sidas Matrix, the, the mountain runner. Ooh, I think I need to breathe. <laughs> it is Ponce, there we go. Man, I am losing my nerves here. Uh, yeah, so they're together, and it looks as though Caitlin is now catching up, which is very good to hear. Caitlin is, uh, is uh, born and bred in New Zealand, but she lives about half of the year in Andorra. Um, and we know uh, this expression called Andorra flat, which is everything but flat. So she's used to steep up and steep down. And uh, even though she, she didn't want to kind of brag or anything, um, uh, I think she can do well on the technical as well. Uh, so we'll see, and it's good to see her catching up here with um, with Elise Ponce. They're running with uh, a guy called uh, Magnus Sivingheim. Oh, he, um, I, I think he did the uh, Marathon de Mont Blanc, and he ran with some custom-made um, Nike Vaporfly. He uh, he mounted some um, Vibram <laughs> rubber on them, and they looked absolutely smashed when uh, you reach the finish line. I mean, that's the thing. There's, it's one thing to have the grip. If you want to talk about footwear a little bit, I'm sure some people will be interested. It's a combination of a lot of things. And the problem with the Nike Vaporfly is that they're super high, the stack high. So you're very far up <laughs> and away from yeah. the ground. Yeah. And so therefore, that thing alone will create instability. And so on any type of technical terrain, that will be a massive challenge to actually run comfortably. So the oversize is definitely not done for technical running. And then, as you were mentioning, they were de destroyed because the short st stiffness in the midsole is actually extremely soft, especially in the heel, because those shoes are made to run four foot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so there's a carbon plate that keeping the integrity of the shoe. However, in a trail race, you definitely uh, land on the, your midfoot and uh, heel strike even. And so no wonder that shoes was absolutely destroyed. Yeah, he's not using a Vaporfly today, actually. So. <laughs> I think the lesson was learned. <laughs> and so now we got more runners coming down uh, off the top, and I think this is probably a top 10 in the men's right here. Or no, I think our camera runner were I initially trying to keep up with the first men, but that quite didn't happen. So he must be up there now, staying there to wait for the first woman to come in. And I think Caitlin might, might have been, if I do in the math right away off the top of my head, she might be in fifth and sixth position for Elise Ponce uh, behind, uh, behind Sophia, behind Sarah, behind um, who was in third. Uh, Blondin was in fourth. Oh, Emily, Emily Forsberg, I yeah, keep yeah, forgetting her. Yeah, yeah. We haven't seen her in so long. Oh, but she's going to be dangerous. Oh, that's exciting dangerous on the downhill uh, but it looks as though at least on this point that she's a bit she fell back a little bit and she's with Bailey Kowals Kowalsik uh, from uh, the US from Colorado so this is also going to be uh, a little bit of news in terms of mud for Bailey and uh, and I think we'll have an overall ranking uh, of the men's coming up so we'll be able to analyze a little bit what has been going on 
Uh, so Jonathan, not surprisingly, has is in the lead. However, the splits are infinitely small. It's just very tiny two seconds. David Emanini has been able to keep up with John Albon in the descent. Elusin Lazawi, same, six minutes back, which is exactly where he wants to sit. He, he never takes the lead. I can tell you that much. He never takes the lead and is kind of picking the trajectory according to whoever is in front of him. So he's sitting there. And then it was just over a minute, wasn't it? Or to who? Uh, fourth place. Yeah, 50 seconds. Ah, it was 50 seconds yeah. already. So these three runners uh, show that in a very short period of time, it, it was not even 10 minutes, they've been able to put a minute on um, on the fourth place runner. There we have uh, Jonas, the local um, Fjord Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Sofia, she's put on a, a she's jacket. She's put on a jacket That's and smart. gloves. Smart. Very smart. So you see like, people with experience in the mountains, they know that you do not want to get cold. And um, and as you, as we were seeing earlier, and it's still the case, the wind is blowing sideways. Um, so you definitely don't want to get cold. She is still in the lead. And the last, last update we had was that she had four minutes on Sarah Alonso. And I think I'm getting worried. Sarah obviously has the military equipment, so she has a jacket. And so if she gets really cold, she will put it on. And secretly, I hope that she would have put it on because there's no way you do not lose a lot of heat and therefore energy on that ridge the way the wind is blowing right now. Yeah, and even if you don't uh, sweat, you do lose a lot of, a lot of uh, fluids through your uh, breath. Indeed, yeah, 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 yeah. So as well, indeed, it's, it's right to mention, they need to fuel properly, hydrate properly, because again, you're paying so much attention to the terrain you're running on, uh, you, you better be on top of your nutrition and hydration as well, because <laughs> we were joking about this when we did the Reiki uh, two days ago. In the swamp, if you, if you bunk there, you'll be going backwards, you're gonna get stuck in the mud and you, you won't be moving at all. So I think, uh, yeah, it's important to, to mention that, that it is essential to be on top of nutrition and make sure you get the calories in. There we go, top of the highest point. And Sophia is still leading the women's uh, uh, field. Sorry, I'm looking at my watch trying to get a split as well. So it was bang on 22. Uh, we'll see when Sarah comes in and if she has gained or lost uh, a bit of time. Uh, on the leader, current leader. Uh, so then Blondine Lirondel is still still in third. Bailey Kowals Kowalsik. Ah, sorry. Bailey, oh love, my bad. I should have practiced a little more, uh, but the struggle is really real with your name. But super stoked to see you up there right now. Emily Forsberg, uh, again, we said do not pay too much attention to the time on the right side because it's not uh, really accurate. Julie Roux as well from France. We can expect her to do really well on the technical. She is uh, she's very, very strong on that kind of terrain. And then we saw uh, just after Caitlin Filder. We're still here. I'm still wearing my puffy jacket because I don't feel like I, I did warm up <laughs> that much looking at that summit, that windy, wet summit. Uh, but this is definitely super exciting to see um, both these men's and women's. And I mean, I, I, I don't know about you, but I can't wait to have the next update in the men's and hopefully... I can't wait. I can't hopefully wait. Some, some footage uh, of, uh, of them running over the technical. So basically they were after the highest summit, they were going down the saddle where you saw that on the, on the 3D map. And then there you go. And then back up uh, onto the second highest point. But see already here we're past... Oh no, no, okay, that's backwards. So we're, we're having the view. So the, the highest summit is on the right and then they're going left. Yeah, they're, it's down on a kind of a, like a saddle. Yeah, and now up to uh, to uh, Heimste Blohurna, and and again we have uh, a black square on the top left corner of our screen, so we can't really see what's happening at the front. We know Bart is um, ahead of Elusin and David and Davide Manini, so that seems odd because then it means that Davide fell back and Bart passed him, and um, I'm assuming, because I don't see him here, that uh, John is now in the lead and pulled, uh, dropped actually, uh, Davide and Elusin. Yeah, and uh, last year's uh, winner, uh, Anders Haga, he is, um, can you see him there? He's top 10, so he's right behind there. Yeah, it's pretty and solid right so he's far. he's in front of uh, Anders Kjarvik, yeah, so we might have some local uh, runners in top 10.
Okay, so uh, one last comment is like Roberto De Lorenzi uh, that we saw again, very quiet runner, but extremely strong. And he shows, and we knew that he's very strong on technical. So we'll see on the second descent if he can uh, get closer to the lead. We have a short uh, commercial break and we'll be back to see the second woman, uh, most likely Sarah Alonso, go over the highest point. Stay tuned with us. If you don't know what trail running is and you think it's like running, <laughs> you're miles off. Running is the most simple sport in the world, but when you connect that with the race, then it gets way more complex. It's the time of the season where I can afford to take more risk. I think it's really hard to see the limit. And it's amazing. How can you fuck up your body if you don't listen to it really? I knew that it was the chance of my life to be a professional runner. It really is open you can win today. I would like to see them kicking ass. We have the two weapons to win everything. All you see is the glorious finish line shot of winning or passing, but there's so much more humanity in trail running, and I think that's the real reason we all love it. There we go. There she is uh, now in the lead, uh, sorry, second place, Sarah Alonso. And uh, we expected her to have worn her jacket. That is not happening. She has gloves though. So that's a start. And uh, I'm sure this is also functional. Um, so if she needs to hold on to rocks or potentially, uh, we hope not, but fall, then she'll have a little bit of hand protection. So she is now tracking downhill. It's going to be really good uh, to see her uh, running on that technical terrain and see how fast she can go. Uh, if our camera runner has some feedback, if he can swipe the top of his camera, because now it is full uh, of rain drops, so we kind of struggle to see the images properly. But as you are joining us, if you're coming back from the short break, um, it's Sarah Alonso in second place, do on the out and back, coming down from the highest summit. And um, I did not pay attention too much. And I hope I didn't miss any other female going up on this out and back. And you see Sarah Alonso at this point still moving relatively strong on that part. But again, it is rather flat. And then it will get yeah, to the junction totally where the they junction actually had a chance uh, uh, where they came out fr from the, the boulder field. And there it drops. It drops way steeper. And who do we get? Who do we get here? That's Blondine Lirondel. She's very, very close. Uh, looking good, she got a smile on her face. She's very focused. Oh, it's good to see, because she's moving, uh, if I'm not mistaken, about as fast as Sarah Alonso. It means that she's not gonna lose too much time, if not potentially gain some time. She has long sleeve, and again, even though 25 kilometers is pretty short, I think it can happen really quickly that you lose a lot of energy because of the cold, and Blondine is way better prepared for that. So we'll see, but I would say, uh, probably not even 20, 30 seconds uh, in third position yeah. is Blondine Lirondel. So I'm guessing uh, the next now, female runner we should see coming through would be um, uh, Emily Forsberg. Uh, that's that's who I believe is in uh, is in third place. But Emily would have lost one spot to Blondine because earlier she was in third and Blondine in fourth. And we've seen Blondine go through in third position. And, uh, and now there's been about a minute. So we got... Uh, Another run, female runner here going up. I'm not sure who that is. And then <coughs> more runners coming down. Oh. I'm going blank here. Do you recognize anyone? No, no. Yeah, I was just away for a couple of minutes. You know, we're humans too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was just uh, downstairs because we actually we are sitting uh, uh, in the building right beside the finish line, and the runners will actually come running through the building. Yeah, so, so we're right sitting beneath on, us. Yeah, <laughs> right beneath us. And uh, now the first runners of the 48k are just arriving. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah. okay. So if you hear in the background some vuvuzela, some people screaming, that's exactly what's uh, what's happening because it is crowded here. Oh, there we go. We got our second camera render. Catch him, Sarah Alonso, Alonso. coming down okay, in second Alonso, position so and still moving pretty well. And uh, but then 
uh, Blondine Mirondel had come in third and she was about 20, 30 seconds back only and looked as though she was moving quite well as well. And so even though she was, she said she would try to have a conservative approach on, on that section, uh, I think if she can see Sarah in the distance, she'll try to keep up with her, if not try to creep up on her. Because again, if you can have a runner like about five meters ahead of you, that is a massive game changer because you will know uh, which stone is stable and which stone is not. And therefore you can adapt your footing and be much more efficient and therefore faster. I'm glad she's wearing uh, gloves. Cause, uh, <laughs> That's what I said. We're hoping okay. for a jacket, but there's no jacket. <laughs> yeah, I mean, n not just for, uh, for, uh, for staying warm, but to, I mean, if you fall. Yeah. Yeah, it's uh, that's, that's unintentional. It's, like, it's yeah. more functional from the potential. Yeah, with uh, some screen. padding. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but see how much she's moving and she's been thrown around. So that takes so much out of you uh, as a runner because this is very, very different from just running in a straight line. And this is where strength and conditioning plays the biggest role. Because as the runner, if you want to be an overall strong runner, strength and conditioning is absolutely necessary. And uh, I've experienced it myself from just running and even high mileage and, uh, and compromising one or two runs to go to the gym. Oh, oh. whoa, 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 whoa. Seems to be all right. Uh, it was to be expected. Hopefully nothing's too bad. She's still staying. She st stood back on her feet. Sarah Alonso. Oh, yeah, yeah. I hope she's all right. Well, she's still moving. Is, she's is, an is animal. Is she limping so, a little bit? Or I mean, she's th right? that, that's, that's the thing. Um, even if she's... Hurt. Like she will probably keep going unless she broke something, but that's knock on wood. That's not gonna happen. Yeah. Uh, and you can hopefully, see a really fast uh, oh, oh. guy on the right side there. Or yeah, the yeah. So I was gonna say like hopefully she she is still up there and, and knows that it would be way easier to try and follow someone, but that one went just flying past. So there was very little chance to actually keep up with him. And I don't know if you look at her feet, you see some stones are actually rolling and moving. And that's what's making this. This terrain really incredibly hard to to run on. Yeah, if you're not used to this, uh, this is super gnarly. This is extremely gnarly yeah, indeed. Yeah. And there she she slips again. I mean, she lives in Spain. She's used to the heat. Um, obviously, I mean, no, she no no no. She, uh, I'm sorry. I'll take that back. She lives in a Basque country, and and therefore she is. Um, uh, uh, we have a replay here. If you missed it, of Sarah oh, slipping. Oh, 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 that doesn't look very good. That looks brutal on the on the uh, right hip. right yeah right hip. Oh, and it looks like she's lowered to the ground again. Maybe lower herself to just go down. Yeah, you see, that's why you need gloves here. Just yeah, to be able to touch the rock. Grab, yeah, 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 you're constantly grabbing rocks. Yeah, we caught this on camera. Imagine all the other runners. Oh, 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 there's going to be an amount of falls that is just going to be insane. And uh, I can even suspect that our camera runners might take a fall or two themselves. It's almost like um, I feel like the runners should be wearing helmets. <laughs> you know, they should be handed out helmets on the top and maybe they can uh, throw them in a, or give them away uh, maybe after summiting the next mountain. And so you see the course markings here are still horizontal, so that the wind is still blowing extremely strong, hence probably why we still don't have drone images. It's just maybe um, not gonna happen again. The weather uh, is just too bad for it. And now we are with Sarah Alonso, who's, uh, who's coming off the highest summit and soon she'll be on the saddle and here she is we knew she would come back on technical Emily Forsberg she was she, she must have gone through uh, either I missed her or she got, went through the summit in fourth position she now has passed Blondin Lirondel and she's just going to overtake Sarah Alonso yeah, as yeah. if Sarah was not even moving so I hope Sarah would just know that's her her technique is and, superior uh, it's just yeah there's no question about yeah, it yeah and I think, I believe she will make a statement here just to try and, and push a little bit the pace so Sarah can not keep up. Because I'm sure Emily will know that if she drives her down, that's going to be an advantage for Sarah. So she will want to open a little bit of a gap um, onto Sarah straight away. Uh, hopefully our camera runner can run a little faster. <laughs> Come on, man. <laughs> Take a jail. Take a jail and go. <laughs> And so Blondine Lirondel, uh, that might be her. Whoa, yeah, that's her. And she's moving well, too. So, I mean, there's a bit more grass on this area. The saddle is a slightly more runnable. So this is maybe why we can see her. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, there, we go. Yeah, there is a bit a of a trail. trail. Yep. 
Uh, but still, like she is not too far back, but yet we see right now the queen of technical, Emily Forsberg, has just taken advantage of that technical section to go from fourth to right now second and, uh, and hopefully take some time off again because in the lead, even though we haven't seen her in a while, um, Sophie is, uh, was four minutes and 19 seconds uh, ahead of second place uh, at the time, Sarah Alonso at the top. Have we uh, did, did we get in the footage from uh, Sofia uh, on the downhill? Um, not really because the camera runner just saw the, the turn around and then and then it, she was gone. But she looked like she wasn't. Uh, I mean, she wasn't walking. That's for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but was she as comfortable as we saw Emily? I doubt it. I doubt it. We knew. I mean, we knew Emily was. In, in that field, uh, regardless of her training, the skills do not go away. And she has it uh, for sure. So we get more men's here coming down off the, the, the top. Is it past the saddle? Is it a second camera runner that we have here? No, it's still, uh, that's still the, still the, the first, the first downhill. Yeah. So we're back at the very top. Oh, and there we go. These are the images. That's a replay of our first woman, Sophia, who had put on a jacket. Yeah. We saw her going up, but I don't think we saw much of her going down. And then uh, Sarah Alonso, who was at the time in second, but we saw her uh, take a fall and then um, actually uh, being passed by um, Emily Forsberg. So the current ranking is actually not accurate. And you can have like Sophia locally is still uh, first, but then in second place is now Emily Forsberg, second, uh, third, sorry, Sarah Alonso, and fourth, Blondine Lirondel. We didn't see Bailey Kowalczyk yet. Uh, but at the time, she was in that position. Julie Roux, again, if Bailey is not very comfortable, Julie Roux from France could very well uh, make some ground here in that technical part. So we'll see uh, how it goes, and uh, we'll see if our camera runners can catch a little bit deeper into the women's field. I can't wait, wait to get some uh, updates from the front of the men now. It's been a while. You can see uh, John Alban. He's put on a big gap. Oh, there a we go. Big gap. And guess who's in second now? Who took advantage of yeah. that descent? Yeah. We were expecting him. It's too bad that he was a bit further away, so he couldn't go truly neck to neck with John Albon. But Manuel Merias, uh, actually, he's together with Bart. So he caught up with Bart, but couldn't quite pass him yet. And now it's. Um, it's going to be interesting because John is familiar with this terrain. He knows the course, so he'll be able to navigate and hopefully not waste too much energy. Uh, Manuel Merias has good footing as well. Bart, yeah. same. Um, but I feel like Bart will be wanting to try and, and, and give everything he's got. And that could be uh, an issue if he goes too hard. Because like I was saying, this will take a lot out of you with, if you push too hard. And then the last part where you can actually push hard. Uh, might uh, not let you do that. So these are tables with the aid station and uh, all elite athletes equally regarding of their sponsor have been offered the possibility to have their water bottles, gels, energy drink dropped there. So basically all the top runners have uh, the they're equal when it comes to aid stations. They have whatever they wanted. Uh, they, they gave their stuff yesterday and it's been dropped at the 8K mark and at uh, the, I don't know how many Ks that is, 14.4, uh, it's written, I just need to read it. Um, and uh, where they can pick up some stuff as well. But yeah, you're right, John Album now has opened a really, really significant gap, which means he's still the king of the technical. Yeah, for sure, he eats this for breakfast. This is uh, this is what it does. Uh, so we try to have a little bit of light adjustment here uh, to see who's going through. Yeah, but we don't know where he got that gap. Was it on the super technical part? Uh, and if so, maybe there's a chance for Magnini to catch. Uh, the other guys now that we approach. The uh, so swamp. here is Bart getting his stuff through the aid station. Nice. Bring it all over. Yeah, he probably was a little bit too much that he wanted, like more than he wanted to carry. Or, you know, when they put it in the belt, if it's actually too full, yeah, like he yeah, bounces yeah. off. So that's why he's, even though he just picked it up, uh, he's actually emptying it uh, a little bit. So hopefully now our camera runner has uh, also uh, been through the aid station, got a gel, got energy drink. Um, and he's going to be able to, like, Again, and you can talk about this terrain, I want to stress this, this is everything but runnable. And seeing the pace at which Bart is going is absolutely insane. 
Yeah, right now you can run, but uh, when we're approaching the downhill, it's going to be really swampy. And swampy downhill is, um, you, I mean, you can't trust the, your, your steps. Step. Yeah, no. yeah. Maybe you can. Tr maybe you feel like you can trust uh, your steps for maybe 10 meters, and then suddenly there's a swampy section. So you, um, yeah, it's super gnarly. <laughs> And we hear outside the window the vuvuzelas of the people cheering the What's the, the deal kit. with vuvuzelas? Uh, well, it, you know, at the Golden Trail Series, we always try to have a show and cheer people on. So there's been bells at Zagama, uh, but then uh, I can't remember at which race it was vuvuzelas handed over to all the participants, and it was insane the noise that was going on. I think in Zagama this year they wear vuvuzelas, and so people have this, and it's really cool because then it only takes like a handful of spectators to make the, the noise of a crowd of a whole yeah, stadium. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Some really cool uh, footage here. Yeah, and you see, like now, yeah, you know, in some races, you try to avoid a little bit the uh, the the cross, the creek crossing, sort of keep your your feet wet. No chance here. You go th straight to it because you're already absolutely swamped. Yeah, and soon there 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 will be some, um, I don't know what you call it in English, but there will be some planks laid out for. Um, Oh yes, they're kind of like uh, uh, horizontal ladders. Yeah, yeah. They, we can st step onto, and, it, and it, it's nice for hikers, but for runners, it's uh, we call them just traps. Ah, they're death, okay. death traps. Uh, okay, uh, so I wanted to know that because we, when we reached the ro route, we were like, "Wow, that could be lethal." Because if you slip and your foot falls right in the middle, in the, in between two of the the um, the steps, then you break your leg yeah, yeah, right away. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, I think you're better off going around it. Yeah, just uh, even though it's super muddy on the side, just uh, don't step on the on the traps. <laughs> and they're really they're really slippery as well. All right, all right. So it looks like Manuel Merias now is in second place. Has put pedal to the metal in that downhill. Bart is still in the top three, giving everything he's got. Yeah, Al Albert is giving us some uh, some, some insight, insight info here. Yeah, yeah John has a, a almost a three minute gap over Bart at the checkpoint. At so the three checkpoint. minutes. Three minute gap, pretty yeah. pretty significant. Which means if uh, if we can compare uh, the distances, it means that maybe Bart is like 30 seconds off Manuel, so very very close. And maybe another minute back is together. Davide Manini, Elusine Lazawi, and I missed the last one, but this might be uh, Fred Tranchant. Uh, who would be very interesting. So there we go, Manuel Merias in second place. Now he's, uh, there we go, hey, look at him, <laughs> happy as a clown. He is in his environment, he loves it. And then uh, probably, oh wow, the, the wind is still blowing. I thought he was only gonna be in the summit, but no, the wind's still blowing going across that uh, swamp. And you can guess somehow a little bit of a trail, but as uh, Hans was saying, Sometimes you're better off off the trail um, because um, the, the ground is uh, slightly more stable. Talking about stable, uh, I think uh, either he's shaking because he's cold, but I can't remember runner is <laughs> like a bit of stability here, but it's okay. We have the silhouette, we have him running, we can guess how quickly uh, the pace is for Manuel Merias currently sitting in second place. Uh, I don't know if he has any idea of the splits uh, with John Alban, but I'm sure if he looks back, he will see Bart uh, not too far back, so he knows that the pressure is on, and uh, I think now until the finish, it's gonna be just full gas. Yeah, John told me this is when you need that last oomph. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so we just got an update. So apparently, uh, you know, the, the the runners had a bib number and then they had a, a RFID tracker, which allows for uh, when they go through the the checkpoints uh, to have updates in the overall ranking. And on top of that, a GPS tracker. And it sounds as though the RFID tra um, uh, chip that Manuel has uh, is actually not working. So if you're looking at the live ranking and you don't see him pop up, that's why he's still for sure in the lead. And look at this, we're seeing him right away. And now this is Fred Tranchant. I was telling you he was gonna make a move in this area and he did. So now he's, uh, if we are not mistaken and if we didn't miss anyone in between, it would mean that he even caught up with Bart. I think uh, I, want, I want to take this with a grain of salt here because this might be fourth place in a third place. Uh, Fred Tranchant, um, definitely admire here uh, how smooth he is and like basically his upper body is barely moving and just like 
going through. This is this is amazing. This is awesome. And then the train behind him, which is the camera runner, and then I uh, can't remember who it was. I think Davide Manini was with him. Uh, will should be right behind him to take the exact same line and step wherever he is stepping because that will be a massive advantage. So here, I don't know if we missed uh, Bartolomeo, uh, who is still in third, or if Fred Tranchon passed him. Um, but well, yeah, you see, even for an orienteering runner, uh, it is not always secure. But wow, after now about 15 kilometers, they're still moving extremely strong. And uh, Fred knows he had two options here. Either try to go through it, uh, keeping the same pace and, uh, and not wasting any energy to be able to shift another gear when uh, he's going to have the ability on the last descent after, like, you know, they're going to go slightly uphill in that little nub that you see in the background and then down. And that last downhill is, is essentially where you can start go pedal to the metal. And uh, so that's option one or option two is like give everything he's got knowing his competitive advantage there he, he would it wouldn't cost him as much to put time on his competition or catch up with his competition ahead uh, if he's uh, if he's going all out and um, I just want to mention that I think our camera uh, so there we go Elusin Lazawi right there well look like look. <laughs> Looks like he's in a pain cave, <laughs> but again, not surprising up here uh, in potentially fourth or fifth position. I don't know if we can have an update from the from the from the field. Yeah, we got some inside info here. So maybe we've missed actually Bart and Davide Manini, and we went straight to um, Fred Tranchon. Therefore, Fred might actually be in fifth, um, and uh, and Elusin in sixth. And we would have missed uh, Bart and Davide Manini together because we're going back and forth between two camera runners and we might have actually missed them as I potentially suspected. But anyway, it is still extremely exciting and also scary because now <laughs> John has disappeared. He's out of the picture. Yeah, from yeah. the field means like he's way ahead. He's tipped over the kind of the last climb of the race, a short climb up to that hill that you see in the background. And now we're following, so who I believe is in sixth place, uh, Elusine Lazawi is still running strong. And ahead of him is um, Fred Tranchon. You have a runner in between, but that's a, cam like, that's a cameraman. He's got a big backpack and he's uh, full waterproof, so don't get fooled. There we go. So you, you told me he doesn't drink or eat during a race because of stomach issues? He, uh, he tries, but he always struggles and uh, oh, often gets sick during or as soon as he crosses the finish line, he actually throws up. As soon as the huh. effort just uh, falls down, he, he actually gets sick. So when he, you can't actually process food during the, your effort, like gradually your, your, your energy level will go down and then sometimes it's, it's a bit tough to finish uh, on a high. So, yep, it confirms. So we have Bart and... Oh, so what happened? No, we ha we, we're missing here. Oh, Davide Manini, or did he fall back that much? There he is. There he is. So he is back uh, behind Elusine Lazawi. So then Manuel Merias wouldn't have... No, nah, no, I think it's... That's my guess, John Alban, then um, Emmanuel Merias was still in second, then Bart, then Fred. Unless, okay. unless a big move has been made, but we didn't have images of that, so I can only suspect. So you don't trust the uh, live tracking? Sometimes it's off, and, and, and earlier we've seen like positions move uh, okay. yeah. a, a little bit, so we don't know. Here is Thibaut Barognon. Yeah, it's been a while since we've seen, uh, seen him. Yeah, yeah, still moving strong, still I think within the top 10, so that would be a very good performance uh, here. And again, he, he manages very well. His, uh, his energy levels, so we can count on him to push hard all the way to the end. And uh, he can be a fast runner as well on the road, so uh, don't roll him out. As our camera runner is pulling back from the top of the field. And see, like, as soon as it's a little bit of an inclined uh, cam camber the trail, like, they have no grip whatsoever, and they slide down uh, here to the right as our camera runner is... Uh, <laughs> shaking a little bit. <laughs> uh, and we might be losing a little bit of connection here. We'll see if we can transition uh, into, there we go, like a ranking, John Alban, Bart, 
So see now we have something different. Davide Manini, Elouzine El Azawi. But again, that's what we've been told um, that Manuel Merias actually his uh, chip doesn't work, and therefore this is all obviously automated. There's not a little person writing all the names very quickly. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. But we have uh, Anders Haga. Yeah, he uh, came back. Currently on sixth very or seventh. Yeah. It, if this, if this is accurate again. Mm. Uh, which means he would be straight uh, behind Thibaut Barognon in, um, in in the rankings. So we just missed him, but again, up high the conditions. We can see here at the window. Uh, it's interesting because here there's absolutely zero wind, so maybe we are sheltered it's clearing up on the on the right side of the, the mountain. Yeah. Uh, but definitely up still on that swamp. We could see the flags flying completely horizontal and uh, and having uh, ch 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 challenging the runners. So uh, yeah, we're, we're, we'll have a short commercial break here and uh, as soon as we get the images back, we're back with you. So stay tuned because we're getting to the very exciting part of the race. There's a lot going on both in the men's and the women's field. So stay tuned. The best is yet to come. <laughs> sports but quickly I turned into cross-country skiing and biathlon which has been my main way of living life for the last 28 years I guess. Very few of the athletes start out of trail runners. It actually sucks in the best talents from other sports. My first sport where I was competing was radio orienteering. For me my first sport is chemo. I ran track but trail is where my heart is at now. I think something about trail runners is that we often don't identify as just trail runners, but more just lovers of the outdoors. To be honest, I was a little intimidated by the Golden Series at first. I never won a Golden Trail Series race before. It really is open who can win today. Uh, it's always good to win at home. We have the two weapon to win everything. This is the head-to-head -head we've been waiting for. If you don't know what trail running is and you think it's like running, <laughs> you're miles off. At the moment on the overall ranking I'm 11th, which is a tricky spot. Having two athletes at the final, this is crucial to us as a brand. It shows credibility. One of the teams that's been really impressive this season has been Team Matrix. Just behind Salomon, I think we, we can be the second big team of the world. I think it's really hard to see the limit. It's amazing. How can you fuck up your body if you don't listen to it, really? All you see is the, the glorious finish line shot of winning or passing or the epicness of it. But there's so much more humanity in trail running. And I think that's the real reason we all love it. As many people say, like running is the most simple sport in the world. But when you connect that with the race, then it gets way more complex. Oh my gosh, like if I can't finish the race at this point, like I'm gonna be so mad. Oh, no, I have a lot of new scars. You need to take something home from, from such a race. All right, we're back live. 
And uh, we're still liking a bit of images, but as we have understood coming from the studios, we'll have a little bit of a replay of what happened in the first, like, like two-thirds of the race, I'd say, because maybe there's one-third uh, left. Yeah. And um, uh, we yeah, have we right have now the tracking. Here. And uh, wow, Lockley still in the in the lead. Sophia Lockley, ladies and gentlemen, coming from the U.S. is still in the lead. She had four minutes and 19 seconds over the second place, who at the time was Sarah Alonso. She just disappeared. She went stealth mode. <laughs> but Emily Forsberg is in second place. We saw her overtake uh, Sarah. She must have overtaken also Blondine Lirondel, and you know that was the conversation we had. She is not 100% comfortable on this, and she's also already lost a bit of ground. Elise Ponce, who I, I completely got her wrong, so my apologies. Désolé, Elise, uh, is actually making a very strong comeback in the descent and uh, could even potentially come back onto Sarah Alonso for the third place, uh, potential third place on the podium. Will she be able to reel in all the way until um, uh, Emily? I don't know, but who knows? Yeah, let's see. I've been wrong before, many yeah. times. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, but we're approaching uh, the flat swamp here, towards uh, Blåhundsvatnet. Uh, and uh, <laughs> definitely the, the better runner will... Um, yeah, it's going to favor the, uh, the good runners now. Yeah, and uh, we, we've been asked if uh, the kind of Golden Trail Series merch will be available anywhere. Um, it is definitely available uh, at some races. Uh, whether it is going to be sold online, I have my doubts. Uh, but if you're around, and uh, if you come to see me after the race, I can hand, hand you over my cap. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so now we have John Manuel. Ah, it looks like about the same... Um, same gap, really. Yeah, like, it looks like it. Looks like they're looks they're like not ca capable of, of catching with catching up with John. Uh, Bart uh, still holding on ahead of uh, David Manini, Fred Tranchon making some ground and losing losing some ground. Uh, wow, there's so much going on. And as you were saying, um, I, well, I won't even try with his family name, but Anders uh, is oh, with Ro Haga. <laughs> Roberto De Lorenzi together. Uh, if they push each other, uh, they could really do well. Because right now, uh, if I'm right, they're six and seven, and uh, that's already a ma an incredible performance, really, on, on this kind of terrain, um, and and with that kind of field, yeah. most importantly. Yeah, he, uh, he comes from uh, cross-country skiing. He lives in uh, Oslo. Okay. Okay. Um, but somehow, I think he's uh, he's the race director of Eastfjorn Sky Race, which oh, is not far from here. Oh, there you go. So yeah, here. he knows something about like, yeah, yeah, yeah. course marking he's been, and. He's been to the mountains before. Very good. So yeah, you guys were talking about the Gold Trail series, uh, caps. You got T-shirt. It's here, but I'm cold, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I actually keep it. <laughs> um, but yeah, so right now, if you're joining us, we have a little bit of a break because we were struggling on one part of the terrain to get the live images. Um, but we saw with the GPS tracker, the ranking is still the same in men's and women's, and it looks exactly like the same scenario. One man, one woman, the leaders are far ahead of the field. Yeah, uh, John just uh, just passed uh, Vardnaken at almost uh, 17 Ks, which means he's, uh, he's soon going into the forest, or the deforested forest first. Uh, isn't that further down? I thought at this point you still have that long thing with the... With the um, the ladders is that the oh yeah that's right yeah that's right okay yeah yeah, yeah. so there's still this part where I, I thought personally when i i um i ran on the course like this is where you start to have some ground and you can really push um if you still have some in the tank and this is where i think the good runners will be able to catch up a little bit uh, but yeah he, john at the time had over three minutes over manuel Merias. and uh we don't know now uh, how far ahead but it looks if he has not like if he has not made any ground, he surely did not lose any. Uh, so what can we guess now? Manu Merias is also a very strong uh, downhill runner, I believe. But then Bart, Bart, when he'll go through the checkpoint, could really try to open up, like crank up another gear, and then go all out, take chances. Uh, Fred Tranchon will also be comfortable on that, but he has a little bit less power than Bart, who's just an absolute beast uh, on that kind of terrain. Elusin as well, uh, you know, I don't know if he's um, 
pulling back a little bit because of that energy uh, issue and then fueling issue or if the pace is just too strong or if the runners behind him are actually like now starting to catch up all right we have some uh some footage here from the course let's see it, if it's from oh, uh, no. the ladies or the men maybe uh so we get people going and maybe we'll have a female runner going through yeah hopefully that's what i was thinking maybe we'll have a uh, lockley i think her last name is lockley norwegian because her father is norwegian so that's how uh, you pronounce it so yeah that she has dual citizenship yeah. and that's that would explain why she's that so comfortable it's in the genes it is it is <laughs> there you go so yeah, I, like seeing that, that runner, sorry, I don't remember his name, but I know he's very strong. So he's most likely ahead of the first female. Therefore, we can hope to see um, uh, Sofia go through. Ah, there we go. So as expected, John has put a little bit more time onto second place, Manuel Merias. He has now three and a half minutes. And then Bart is another uh, 30 seconds back from Manuel. And then Fred Tranchant, eh, Fred Tranchant is not too far. It's just like a, a quick 20 seconds. So he definitely can see Bart um, in a distance. And then Elusine a little bit further back, but again, another 15 seconds. And Davide just there. Uh, and then and then there's a bit of a gap. It's about 40 minutes, 40, uh, 50 seconds um, with Thibaut. So it's going to be a bit tougher for Thibaut to come back, but who knows? Uh, I would say it's nothing is uh, is out of the out of the table right now. It's going to be a huge fight for third, <laughs> yes, third position. Yes, I was just thinking yeah. that whoa, like these four men have incredible talents, can all run downhill pretty well, and um, I hope we'll have images. I have a camera runner who can take from uh, the. Um, the the last checkpoint but i believe if there was there we go we have our norwegian crowd here the norwegian going Bubizelis. crazy <laughs> aren't they uh, south african originally who and the vuvuzelas uh i think that's the first time they actually came out yeah it was for the world cup in in, in soccer yeah yeah, yeah. The, the, the soccer world cup and actually what they realized is because the the, the stadiums were loaded mm -hmm. with those, them like even with the most powerful microphones that's, that's the fjord ranger here you go you so even with the most powerful <laughs> microphones they could not hear anything even the players or people talk and so they had to call sound engineers to find the sound wave oh the frequency the frequency yeah, yeah. so they could actually artificially cancel it Maybe and to we'll hear have to something do that from the uh, here for the golden trail series <laughs> so, yeah. if our uh, audio guy can turn off the bubazellas <laughs> that'd be great <laughs> Oh, that's, that's good for the runner. He keeps the show going. <laughs> so, Emily Forsberg here. Uh, hopefully, we'll get a, a split to get the accurate distance between first and second between Emily and Sofia. Uh, Elise Ponce has now passed Sarah Alonso if the, the GPS trackers are accurate. So, hopefully, Sarah did not uh, get injured or hurt herself on the fall that we could witness on the live images. Um, hopefully, she's okay. Uh, another uh, question mark is that maybe she's not starting to suffer from not having had a jacket or um uh a top long sleeve top on because really at the top when you're in freezing environment th this this is really taxing uh, yeah you're using more calories to stay yeah warm. you're burning so mm. much more so either you can for it but then again you're only capable of going i don't know about like 60 70 80 carbs uh grams of carbs an hour if you're trained uh specifically you can go up to some 90 100 uh and some ironman athletes i actually get all the way to 120 grams uh, of carbs per hour so therefore you, you have an energy expenditure which is uh, not so far from what you can process um, but again at this level if you eat that much, it's just too intense. And it, it becomes really, really hard to process um, the, the carbs and to get energy into your body. So if you're losing a lot just from the cold, then, then you, <laughs> you're putting nails in the coffin. For sure. And now we can see there's a train of Scandinavians coming in. <laughs> 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 yeah, I mean, uh, everything can happen. Right, so uh, we might see uh, Silvia Nuskar and Henriette Albon. It seems like they are running together. Mm. It's going to be a fight for for top ten, definitely. Wow! Uh, again, 
Now, what I'm eagerly waiting for is the splits between Sophia and Emily, seeing if Sophie, uh, if Emily is actually creeping up and gaining. And I get someone in the room who's nodding. Is like, yep, this is happening. So we don't have all the details here, but you know, we have a team here uh, with us, g getting information from from WhatsApp, from people on the field. And we have somebody who's talking to all of you actually on on the um, on the, the comments, helping you out. And uh, and he has most of the information from the field because obviously we cannot process too many things. Remember, only female can do multiple stuff at once. We can't. So we stick to the live coverage and we get the information from uh, our team out there. And uh, yes, there was, a, there was a nod saying that I can safely assume that Emily Forsberg is now catching up with Sophia and who knows, might be a fight yeah, for yeah, this too. Yeah. I mean, what a comeback. She's been, uh, she's had two kids. <sighs> yeah. And, and, and she was saying, again, if you weren't with us earlier um, in, in the press conference, she's like, I'm just happy to be back at running and back at being fit. Uh, because in the past four years, obviously, with the two kids, uh, she had to take a step back, being a mom. It, it's a whole process. And then kudos to her for like, coming back and facing the world's best. And after six weeks, she said, I had six weeks of consistent training and I'm super stoked about it because this is the most I've been getting in the past four years. <laughs> and she shows that off of six weeks of training, well, she can still compete with the best, obviously on her terrain. So making, uh, taking advantage of her uh, skills on technical. So it looks as though our current leader, John Alden, uh, has been the fastest both on the uphill, the technical, and the flat. And uh, so he has the green color against uh, his name. Now, if you have the orange, uh, essentially the darker red it gets, the further away uh, the runner is from the fastest time, the reference time on that specific segment. Oh, thanks so, for explaining. I, I, I didn't know. <laughs> yeah, I had been, had been briefed. So essentially, Bart on the uphill was only seven seconds uh, slower than John. Uh, and then Elusine and obviously Davide Manini were just, they were all there in the mix. Uh, but it's interesting on the technical bit, which I believe is from the highest top all the way to the bottom, John has put two. Uh, almost three minutes on Bart, just on that section. So Incredible. we were wondering, Incredible. okay, where did he open the gap? Yeah. That's clearly on that technical part where he got three minutes because right now he is uh, only three and 20 seconds at the last checkpoint, uh, three minutes, 26 seconds ahead of um, of Manuel Merias. However, yeah, so now, now, now it becomes complicated because I need to do the math because at the time, like he's put two, uh, three minutes on Bart, but he actually put uh, we, are, we don't have the time on Manuel Merias. But it looks as though the color uh, against uh, Manuel's name is orange, so he would technically have the second best time uh, on the technical part. And on the flat, I don't even... So Fred Tranchant uh, actually might have played a strategy to try and save his strength, or he was just uh, flat out but did uh, not have um, what it took to compete with John on that, on that section. But again, He's put on Manuel Merias, who at the time was already in second, three minute twenty six, uh, which is which is insane. But you think it's going to be a course uh, record? Yeah, but this is where I'm confused because I know I'm not the best at math, but now it's gone. Uh, but the the um, if he lost. The, the, the count at the end did not uh, add up, so maybe it was the overall time. Uh, on the on the uphill and then the uphill plus the technical and then the uphill the technical and the flat um, because then at the end the the, the 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 times did not add up so uh, take this with a grain of salt it, it is a super cool graphic uh, hopefully we'll get this uh, with the women as well and potentially we get uh, a bit more detail on how it works to explain you the best increasing Ah, we got uh, false. Uh, <laughs> okay, so we, we um, sorry, we're trying to get all the information we can to communicate that with you. And uh, actually, uh, as much as there was uh, a nodding and a smile, um, it's, it, it sounds, uh, we're going back it's and forth here. Uh, uh, in the lead. It's going to be hard it's to place your bed if we're giving you wrong information. <laughs> um, so let's say nothing right now. We know that Emily Forsberg is in second place, and uh, uh, Elise Ponce actually is coming back and is in third. And that's Ari 
That's John? No. No, that's no, not that John. No, that is not John. He no. has a green t-shirt. What am I saying? All right. So hopefully we have maybe the, the female leader who would probably be still wearing her jacket, the white top. Is that her coming? Uh, it's hard to tell. Nope. It's a uh, it's, uh, short Maybe there's no specific reason for showing this from the course. Yeah, maybe maybe we... it's just the camera oh, on the course. Oh, wow. That... Oh, that must have been tough because that's Andy Walker right here that went mm. through from America, and uh, obviously his first encounter with the mud yeah, yeah. <laughs> was not to his advantage. So there we go. We get the um, the woman's uh, time, and okay, we have this ranking already, and um, I do not want to get excited about a potential four minute difference between uh, first and second. I don't believe that is accurate. You can see it changes constantly with GPS tracking it's extremely hard to get accurate splits. So that's why yeah, we've it's not four minutes. We, we, it's not no, four minutes. And that's why we've equipped the runners with RFID chips. Uh, so when they go through the checkpoints, and we have an absolutely accurate uh, time uh, by the second. And then we can do uh, on the screen the accurate uh, ranking, except when <laughs> with Manuel Merias, uh, his chip wasn't working, and therefore uh, he did not appear in the rankings. But you know that that's why we have a team. That's why we have a lot of people out there to feed us with some information. And here we've got the crowd, kind of waiting patiently to go absolutely nuts when the first runners are going to come in. I suspect they're going to blow out the windows here with the vuvuzelas. <laughs> And uh, I don't know, because there's a big screen out there, so I don't know, maybe the public is here and they can uh, get excited, put their hands in the air if they hear us. Uh, thank you for being here. Yes, there we go. And uh, yeah, this is very, very exciting, and I'm sure the runners will be extremely satisfied, excited, and grateful for all of you being out here on this finish line to welcome them home. And uh, boy, what a race, what a race so far. It's pretty cool to bring in the Golden Trail series to uh, a small town like Stranda. I think it's about 4,000 people who live here. Yeah, it's yeah. A, I mean, I don't, event. I don't have the numbers, but it's it's always interesting because some races like Zegama, same, like the village is absolutely tiny. Uh, when you look, uh, even Kanadze is not a huge town. Uh, but yeah. Ah, oh, look at John. He's past the deep forest. Uh, forest. He's, wow, he's, he's on the road. The... John Alban is on the road. He's two k's away from the finish, ladies and gentlemen. At, at his pace, he's gonna be in here like he's probably gonna, less than eight minutes. He's gonna smash the course record. Ah, uh, and we are. Or uh, not smash it, but. Yeah. Two eleven. Two hours eleven. The course record was two thirty one and spare. So yes, he is going. He's to gonna sp smash it. And he is going to smash, no doubt about this. I'm saying less than eight minutes. I think it's going to be even less than that because uh, I think there was two Ks from uh, the dirt road. So he's almost halfway through. So four or five minutes, ladies and gentlemen, uh, we will have uh, obviously preventing any, any sort of uh, misadventure <laughs> to uh, John Alban. We'll have our winner of the 2022 Stronda Sky Race coming into Stronda Town here by the Fjord, amazing landscape and uh, a good crowd here to welcome him as the champion of this edition and most likely new uh, record holder. Except for that fall in, uh, in Chamonix in the last race in Marathon Mobla, I don't think John has ever fallen, like taken a big fall. Which is insane it's considering insane. The, the pace at which he runs over technical. Uh, but I still remember the first time we heard about him, he was at Tromso's Sky Race. Yeah, uh, yeah. And he was, uh, he was running. Ah, there we go. There she is, Sofia. Uh, sorry, back on the course. Our female leader still moving pretty strong, head down. Uh, they probably still a lot of wind up there. Uh, and uh, going, uh, I think she's pretty close from the checkpoint. So she'll be at the 16, was it 16.4 K? Yeah, almost 17. Almost 17 Ks into the race. And this is not Sarah Alonso, do not get full. This is um, American Sofia. Uh, how do you say, pronounce it? Locally. Locally. I need to learn how to say that because I was going to say it with an American accent and that ah. would not have worked. Just say Lockley. <laughs> and it sounds uh, Scottish. Yeah. Lockley. Lockley. <laughs> There we go, there she is, that's the one. Our current leader of the 2022 uh, Stone Fjord uh, race. Passing uh, one of our camera runners here. Anna Chufer. And there she goes, she tips over. 
and now it's all downhill still with some technical parts some challenging parts and again you no know, we were telling you you know you, there's barely a trail you don't see it very well but again 250 runners have gone through yet uh, through this very course earlier this morning the 48k started uh, at 8 or 8 30 and therefore they had the, and they were doing this loop and then going back through sonda and doing another loop and therefore they've all gone through uh, that trail already 250 people and uh, that might we thought it would make it harder for the runners but yeah see there we go yep. it is actually better as you were saying wise also, choice it, it is better to be off the trail because now it must have trumped literally by a lot of runners and made it even more muddy even more slippery Gosh, this is shaky. Do you think it's possible for anyone to uh, to catch her? The way she's moving, I don't know. Like she's showing no sign of uh, of fatigue. When we saw briefly her face as she went by a camera runner, she looked focused, head down. Um, I think she's on top of things, and then she's not a she's not a newcomer, so she she knows how to compete, how to manage her fueling and hydration, her effort overall, and uh, as we saw that she was very comfortable and technical, so. Emily might um, creep up on her a little bit, but I, I don't see Emily over, it's not even 8Ks, like from 25, yeah, it is bang on, 8Ks, 8Ks uh, to the finish at this, uh, this point. Yep. And so it would mean that Emily would have to run 30 seconds per K faster than Sophie. And uh, I Which feel like in, that. In theory, it's possible. In, in, in theory, theory, it's possible. If, if she, she really goes all out, Okay, we're getting some uh, pretty cool inside info here. Emily uh, took uh, three minutes on Lockley on the on, downhill. On, on, on the technical downhill. So she's downhill. blazing downhill. Uh, so she was a little fur a bit further back as we saw originally. And then on that section, Emily ran three minutes faster. And I think that section is four or five Ks. Um, yeah. yeah. So she moved up the field and she, she, she caught up with Sophia. But Sophia had such a lead uh, that she is still, and that's what we're still missing is the actual split between uh, Sophia Lockley and uh, Emily Forsberg. But uh, it's interesting to see that the, the local advantage of knowing the terrain, being comfortable on that kind of terrain, uh, is showing here because we've got uh, two female runners in the lead who. Uh, are really familiar with running on this type of terrain. Yeah, and you can see how close all the other runners are. It's, uh, it's uh, <laughs> quite oh, it's a competitive race. On. Yeah, the, the race for the just top 10 will be insane. So hopefully we have our camera runners, or I know, I don't think it's going to be camera runners. It should be mountain bikers because they're on the road. So there yeah, we go. Yeah. Uh, they're coming. This uh, is John. This is John. There we go. We got John. That's, that's what I was saying. So I was actually wrong. That's the road right now. So I think... I was, must have been mistaken with, with the GPS. So he was on a dirt road. That is still a dirt road. He will come around the corner, get on the uh, hard pavement. And so now he is literally two Ks away from the finish. And at this pace, it is less than four minutes per K. So eight, in less than eight minutes, ladies and gentlemen, I got a bit excited <laughs> earlier. Uh, that's a trick to keep us with, uh, with you, <laughs> to keep you with us, sorry. And, um, and now we're following and see we're looking back but no there's no one to come and challenge john Alden. and if you see all the runners here that those runners have started this morning we're talking about them at 8 30 and they're doing 48 kilometers so these are not participants in a 25k john looking at his splits looking at his time he knows very well the the record of the race and he's like oh maybe i'm gonna have a crack at it even though <laughs> and, and this is something if you weren't with us earlier we explained that th those course records were set uh, last year on a very hot and dry day. So here the conditions are much worse, much harder to run in, but it shows that those competitors are so much stronger. I mean, these are the world's best, literally. He did win uh, this race uh, in 2017, but it was a different course. And in, and it was in, a bit in longer. Yeah, and in 2017, he wasn't yet the trail world champion, mm -hmm. uh, OCC. Uh, champion like his uh, level has increased so much and there we go you get people excited and even like flashing light honking to welcome John Alban everybody here knows that this race is going on and then all the elite athletes plus all the participants ah, sir. I'd love to be a fly on the wall here to hear what John has to say maybe asking what's going on behind what are the splits can we get some uh, some audio from the 
Can the camera guy? No, we can't get yeah. anything. <laughs> Well, he's all smiles, that's one thing for sure. He's in control, he knows he's getting in the bag, both the win and the new course record, opening up his stride. And basically on the downhill, he knows that he essentially has it. So yeah, we got the update. Emily is still four minutes back uh, from Sofia, which means they're basically running really strong, but at the same pace which means it's going to be very tough now that they've gone past the last checkpoint. Uh, they're less than 8Ks to the finish. And so for Emily Forsberg, who has not been gaining uh, on, um, on Sophia uh, on that section, on the box section, it's going to be uh, hard. Okay, so who do we get? Is this Eri Oh! This is Elise Ponce, ladies and gentlemen, who just passed Emily Forsberg. It is a fight for third place. Wow. And see, that's, I wasn't sure, and I said a lot of things that were wrong today, but this part, past the checkpoint, uh, is a bit more runnable, you have a bit more footing, and if you have uh, still some gas in the tank and you have another shift, uh, gear that you can shift, which is the case of Elise Ponce, boom! She just came back and putting uh, a strong effort there. She reeled in Emily Forsberg, and she's now in second place. And I don't know how much Emily has left in the tank. You uh, think she can respond? I, that's the thing. I don't know. But I know for sure that the less technical it's going to get, the fastest Elise is going to be. Uh, again, she was second in the mountain running world championship in Argentina. And look at her. So Emily Forsberg has the advantage of looking ahead, looking at the terrain, and taking the right shortcuts wherever it is possible. Those are pretty cool images here. You've got the men's leader on the right. You've got the poor sweet female second and third, while Sofia uh, is is actually in the lead, about four minutes ahead of these uh, of these women. And we had a change in position. Now Elise Ponce from France, Team Sidas Matrix, is now in second place. But but it doesn't look like she's able to pull away from Emily. Emily is actually keeping up, and uh, and maybe she has something uh, left to be able to respond. Yeah, John is going to be here in about two minutes, I think. He's going to run through the through the building where. Yeah, literally where, through yeah. the building. Wow! And look at this try. Look at the pace still that he's running at. John Albon is about to take a left turn into town. And a sure thing, you're going to hear the Vuvuzela <laughs> and the crowd here in downtown Stranda. I mean, it's, it, uh, his his uh, performance now, it's not just impressive because he's uh, winning and setting a course record, but he's also in the middle of his, like, a huge mileage week. He's training for his CCC. True, true. And on Monday, he did, like, a, a 5K vert session. <laughs> so so uh, not 5k at once because there's no search mountains around here, but so he did repetitions. Yeah, so he this is just him showing up and doing a race. Wow, insane. I know that Caitlin Fielder uh, was in the same situation. Um, and so there you go, another runner from the 48k. John is leaving behind. <clears throat> and yeah, Caitlin was also, uh, it, it was last weekend, she was out for a six hour run again to put some volume uh, in the bank leading uh, into CCC. There we go. Yeah, and they're going to take a, a left turn here and uh, do a small loop. And he's uh, going to be here in about, uh, yeah, one minute maximum. All right, so if you're listening to us people in downtown Stranda, now is the time to get closer to the finish line to get your bells ready, to get the Vuvuzela ready, and to welcome John Alban, who will take the win and new course record in the Stronda Fjord 2022. There we go, we're starting to see you all on the on the side. I'm sure you at home are screaming at your screen as well. <laughs> this, is, uh, this, is, this is history in the making here, and if you weren't following, at Mont Blanc Marathon, John also took the win. So this, are, this is going to be two wins out of two races, and uh, it's going to be hard to then come and challenge him uh, in the overall ranking of the Gold Trail World Series 2022. And so here it is not a camera runner anymore. It is an uh, e-mountain biker who's keeping up uh, with John. So that's a, that's a much safer bet because then you know you're going to be able to keep up. 
And uh, there they go. And it's going to be down slightly left through the building. So I think we're going to lose images here because yeah, the, the mountain biker is not going to go through the building. And he's going to pop out here. There he goes. There he is. Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from Stranda, Stranda Fjord 2022. And our winner for the day for the 25 kilometers, John Alban, all smiles. Amazing. And a new course record as well, despite wow. a terrain that was way harder comparatively to the previous years. He looks Ooh. a bit tired. Well, he I, should be. <laughs> he should be. I think rightfully so. <laughs> wow, what an impressive performance. He was in control pretty much the whole time. And so we're going to do a finish photo. He was just too quick <laughs> to go through the finish line. So do a photo. And the crowds are here crowd celebrating our 2022 champion. John Alban recently joined uh, the North Face team. And uh, certainly delivering as a sponsored athlete. And uh, yes, he can take some water handed over by Greg Volley. Uh, kind of the man behind the whole Golden Trail World Series. Have a conversation here. We can have a mic. That'll be good. Yeah, do we have a on-site uh, microphone? I thought we did. Maybe you can run down with your microphone. We can get up. <laughs> we get into it. Would be interesting to get some updates from the other runners. Yeah, John is probably sharing some valuable information here with the race director. And there you go, Manuel Mirias, all out to take second place. I'm pretty sure a lot of people did not put him in the top three. He had an incredibly strong race and uh, managed his effort well. He knew he wasn't going to be the fastest on the first climb, but as soon as he got technical, man, he, he delivered. Also under a course record. Yeah, yeah. It is worth mentioning that Mayun Mirias coming into that finish area. He's looking back, he's looking back. He does not want to lose that second spot. Obviously, all the runners now going all out. There's a little bit of a climb here that must be pretty painful, potentially activating some cramps. So you got to be smooth and going up the stairs, down the stairs. And uh, you'll see he goes pretty quickly through the building, but we have a little bit of a delay here. So that's why we're like now full live on the finish line camera and second place finisher in the 2022 um, Stranda Fjord. Manuel Mirias! <laughs> oh yeah, shit, I do not know. He has a, he has a nickname, um, and that's why he's doing this. He if, sucks on his uh, thumb? Yeah, 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 because it means something in Spanish, uh, and that's that's his nickname. Uh, I'm sure here on the... on the. Um, Who's that behind him? Oh, what? Is that Bart? Bart was so close! <laughs> so close! That's why he was looking back. Oh, yo, yo, yo. We knew it was going to be a sprint finish between these runners for second position, and they delivered. They still kept uh, their position. Will Davide Manini come in? We have right now one, two, and three. Uh, <laughs> it doesn't look like John uh, had a fall. The other guys, yeah, it looks like they... Yeah, uh, they've been a, been a little bit of a mud all the way up to the T-shirt. And so, wow, yeah. So it means there was a massive fight between Manuel Merias and uh, Bart uh, Predoretsky. And there, Fred Tranchon, haha! He came back, he came back pretty strong. He was always in, uh, in fifth or sixth. And I think he just made up one more spot, it means Davide Manini has fallen back one, uh, one step. This is pretty solid performance here for Fred. We're expecting him to do well uh, with his skills on the technical terrain. And there, footwear of choice, North Face from Scott. Yeah, but today they might as well just run with Crocs, I think. <laughs> I think <laughs> traction still matters a little bit, but uh, yeah. Uh, it, 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 essentially, on the technical part, there was absolutely no chance, regardless of the footwear you were wearing, uh, to actually have some, some traction on it. Did he have duct tape on his leg? Uh, <laughs> probably some tape. Uh, you know, that turned into like pretty dirty stuff after going through the swamps and the mud and all that. 
and um, maybe we can go back. I think there's going to be a couple more runners in the men's field, but see what's happening with um, with Sofia Lockley, who uh, has been in the lead. There we go. There he is, Davide Manini, who close in uh, fifth. And still moving pretty well. He had doubts before the race, and uh, he went out strong. Like I said, since he's not going to the final, he had nothing to lose. And uh, he lost a little bit of ground on technical with them um, compared to the, the other front runners, but still delivered a pretty solid performance today. Can you explain again why he's not going to the final? Uh, because he is in the Italian national ski team and uh, leading to the, the Winter Olympics that takes place uh, in Schimo in Italy at that. Um, they require athletes who are a potential uh, athletes who can be eligible to join um, the team for the athletes and they're actually selecting only one man and only one woman for both disciplines so not one one man and one woman for each discipline it's like one, one man and one woman will have to race both disciplines okay. so this is as little as they're taking and so basically if you want to be part of these two you have to abide to all their rules and uh, and, it, and they say it was a hard no for him to compete in the final so okay. it, it is really sad because again he's one of the top runners and he definitely had something after two wins that goes for John too. He's, uh, I think, he's doing the Trail World uh, Championships. Yeah, that's 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 too bad. Yeah. All right. And there we go. Thibaut Barnier finishing strong. Cutting a corner there. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> Making sure he doesn't go through uh, the pole. And there he is, our Frenchman running for Salomon International. He's been with the team for over ten years, and he still got it. Look at this, fist in the air. He can be happy about his performance. That's extremely solid. And I'm sure he's looking back because he knows that there must have been a fight. Ah, there we go. He, he, they must, oh. I'm saying there must have been a fight. Roberto De Lorenzi. These guys know each other. They race each other. And, um, and they must have known, like, okay, they were full gas to the finish. So now we have about seven runners uh, at the finish line. Uh, yeah, finishing yeah. definitely not on the same pace. Elusine Lazawi. Yeah, that's uh, that's the pain cave. Look right there. Going through and coming out on the other side. I think it's a good thing that he'll finish. Hopefully, won't be uh, sick on the line. But yeah, it looks like he's um, he's hurting. Still thanking the crowds. A good sports person. And oh yeah, shaking his head. He's like, I just, just don't have, didn't have it, all the way through this year. But oh yep, I see one bleeding knee. Took a bit of a fall, uh, but yeah, hopefully nothing major. So we probably have close to our top ten in the men's right now who have made it to the finish line in Honda. And uh, now the question will be, what's happening in the women's again? Um, Sophia looked like was uh, leading uh, the women's field with a four minutes lead. Is that uh, Anders Haga, the Norwegian? Ah, uh, there we go, the who had the previous course record. The previous course record uh, holder. And now he is uh, just one minute back behind his uh, previous course record. Which means he runs stronger uh, because of the course yeah, is, yeah. is essentially way slower yeah. because it's more difficult and technical. But it shows as soon as you bring the Gold Trail World Series to your race, like the, it levels the field so much higher. Uh, and there, okay, another runner limping a little bit. Hopefully, nothing, uh, nothing bad. I can't, I can't see who that is. I think it'd be a better option to stay in the corner and to see them from the front. Sam Hendry from Canada. All right. Well, he looks happy and fresh. Yeah. Oh boy. I think he he wished there was another 10k, and he would definitely have caught up with uh, with Elusin. His T-shirt is as clean as uh, John Albans. <laughs> Maybe he just ran the last uh, two k's. He started from the road. <laughs> <laughs> and there we go. In the Golden Trail World Series, we celebrate the top five runners. And there we go, you have your top five runners in this year's edition. John Alban, winner second, Manuel Mirias, 
only not even 10 seconds back Bartolomeu Prodiorowski uh, then followed by uh, Fred Tranchant from France Scott running and then from Italy running for Salomon Davide Manini and that's your top five in the men's for today and hopefully we can uh, move back uh, into the women's field just to see yep we have a replay of our champion coming in all smiles with the crowds celebrating his win and a new course record Manuel Mirias and look look behind <laughs> look behind we have to ask him uh, the reason oh I'm sure like if you check the comments on YouTube mm -hmm. uh, I believe somebody would have mentioned mentioned uh, why he has uh, I'll check it right now he has that I, I did see. not have that tab open Just have to reconnect to my Wi-Fi and I'll check the comments. Okay. Okay, so we're getting an information from the studios that the GPS trackers seem to be uh, a little bit off, uh, but we still got the confirmation uh, that uh, Sophia is in is still in the lead in the women's field, and Emily and uh, uh, Elise, pardon, sorry, oh, Lala, I'm starting to switch in French. <laughs> um, Elise Ponce uh, are still together. And uh, I don't know, it's going to be interesting. We saw earlier, I hope you were with us for these images, uh, Elise Ponce pass uh, uh, Emily Forsberg in that last section of the descent. And, um, and the, I was telling you, the least technical it gets, the, the fastest uh, Elise Ponce is going to be able to go. But we know Emily Forsberg has the strongest mental attitude and she will not give in anything. She will give everything she has to try and keep up and if not pass and hold on to uh, the second place she had until now and Sarah Alonso potentially dropping back I'm trying to see here on the screen and Blondin Lirondel who might be catching up with Sarah so we'll see uh, because Blondin again on runnable terrain uh, is uh, is also uh, getting better um, and she she definitely has the distance in the legs to to finish with a strong push I got some info from the chat here about uh, the reason he's been sucking on his uh, ah, thumb. There he's going to be a father. Huh? He's going to be a father. Oh! Yeah. Thank so you, F Felipe Heffler. Shout out. There's a question. Is is Alban running the same race as Walmsley? No, Walmsley is doing a UTMB. Yeah, and John will and be doing uh, CCC, the 100K yeah. version of it. Yeah. And Kilian is also doing uh, UTMB. Now the question is if uh, John is going to show up at uh, Sierra Sinal. I don't know. I think that that was in his uh, plans. Was it? Yeah, it, it could have been. Uh, that was uh, like a big maybe. There we go. Kudos to Peru. No, no Colombia. 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 Oh, my bad. Yeah. Still finished like probably within yeah. 12th or 13th and super excited. His number was uh, 428, not four, uh, 42B. Ah, that's yeah. why we got confused. Yeah. Oh, and he probably has people in the crowd who came and cheered him, and he's thanking everyone probably. Ah, oh, there we go. That's the partner. Ah, oh, no, no. <laughs> what am I saying? This is the end. It's time to stop. This is <laughs> Zaid Alvek, who I believe they must have run together for a long time, and then Zaid must have been dropped, and therefore he waited for him to congratulate him. And uh, Zaid, as always, uh, making faces and smiling at the cameras, interacting with everyone. He's just such a nice, happy, genuine person. It's always a delight to have him compete in, uh, in the Golden Trail World Series. He's always smiling. Fun fact about uh, Stranda. All right. They uh, produce Norway's most popular pizza here. 
I think yeah. I heard about it. Yeah. It's, and how many it, pizza do they process a day? I have no idea, but it's... It's um, in the thousands. No, Norwegians are famous for uh, consuming tons of frozen pizza. Oh, that's pretty sad. Uh, I mean, we heat it up before we eat it, but uh, it's, <laughs> it's, uh, it's called uh, Grandiosa, and it's uh, produced here. And so do they freeze it and then ship it all across the country? Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. Well, now I'm interested. All right, more runners coming in. Ladies and gentlemen, who do we get? Who do we get? Is it something we know? Someone we know? Boom, 360. 360. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's potentially one way to do an ankle. <laughs> Wow, and now people are starting to come in pretty close. So there's going to be some brutal sprint finishes to get to the finish line and uh, try to gain or lose a spot because all the way up to top 20, I think you score points uh, that's in the our overall series. Fjord Ranger, Jonas Hesterg. Oh, he gave it all. Local. Good man. Yeah. He, uh, grew, he grew up just uh, right across the fjord. So this is his home um, hometown. Beautiful. Congrats, Jonas. Epic. <laughs> he uh, he uh, debuted in uh, in uh, in Tromsø Sky Race in 2017, at at the age of 17. Wow. Yeah, he was um, right behind uh, Hilary Allen. Oh yeah. When she fell. Oh. Yeah. And the year after, he uh, went and did uh, 18th place, I think, in uh, Transvulcania, oh. 75k, as an 18-year-old. Pretty so solid, uh, yeah. knowing that it's a very different environment as well, like a volcanic island. Yeah. Hot, dry, l windy as well. Okay, so we still have, according to the GPS tracker, back on the women's race, Elise Ponce still ahead of Emily Forsberg, and it looks like she's pulled away a little bit, like a... 20, 30 seconds gap now in between the two uh, female runners, second and third, while Sofia Lokli is still in the lead and coming off. Now you were talking about it, we see clearly on the screen the cut forest. And what was it cut? Was it for like wood or was it a fire? Uh, I doubt there's a fire here. No, it's not, no <laughs> there was not a fire. No, it was just for wood, for uh, just making for planks and stuff. All right, yep. We yep, so instead of going down to the finish line, I'm going to try and bring in uh, our men champion, John Alban, so we can have, actually, a live interview with you all and with our 2022 champion. Stay tuned, I'll be right back, but you're in good hands with Hans. <laughs> I'll, uh, I'll try to figure out something to say then. <laughs> All right, I'm alone in the studio. It's Hans Christian uh, speaking. Uh, maybe this is a good time to take some uh, questions in the live chat on uh, YouTube. Let me know if there's anything you're you're wondering about. I've done the course myself. I know what the runners are are going through. Thanks, uh, Lucy. That means a lot. Yeah, take uh, take the the live uh, updates from the women with a grain of salt because I, I heard uh, that the GPS is a bit inaccurate. Thanks, uh, Nathan. It's pretty cool that we're able to uh, to cover this whole course, even in this extreme weather. Uh, thankfully, we have a 4G connection pretty much all over Norway, which is pretty cool because you can run in the mountains. And uh, if something happens, you're always or pretty much always able to uh, call um, 
to call um, 911 or 112 as we do in Norway or 113. Question from uh, Olav. Hans, were you surprised by the size of the gap John was able to open on the downhill? Uh, maybe I wasn't surprised, but it, it was it was super impressive. I didn't know he was that superior in the downhill. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's cut to uh, to commercials, uh, shall we? And I'll uh, I'll take a, a small break. All right, and we'll be right back with uh, hopefully John Albon. And all right, we're back. Uh, we have uh, the graphic uh, with the split between all the segments. And I am sitting here with John Alban so he can uh, witness it firsthand. And to uphill technical flight and downhill, you've just been the fastest on every freaking segment. You left nothing to the others. <laughs> I was surprised with the uphill, but then I guess I was kind of in the lead group. So I guess that does make sense. But then the downhill and the technical, I really did try and push. So I'm glad I, I got a gap there. The, the, the fastest time, yes, and, and the one information we're missing is Manuel Merias because the, the closer to the dark red it gets, the, the further away from the uh, reference time. So Manuel was actually the second fastest, but we do not have the time. Okay, so maybe it's quicker than me, yeah? No, 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 oh, because okay. if you're in the green, it means you, you, you had... Uh, it's I mean, one star. That's, that's the understanding I, I, I got. Uh, so essentially, see, in the up, they were only plus a few seconds uh, because you guys were together. Uh, but then in the technical, you start pulling away, and then more, and then more, and then more, and you won! Congratulations! Cool. Thank you very much. <laughs> so we were talking uh, with Hans a little bit, and uh, because we had talked with you, we were slightly aware of your plans, and um, this this was not a planned race originally. Uh, no, no, I um, literally I left it up to Henrietta to decide, and last week she just said, yeah, let's just do it. It's so close to home. It's going to be really fun. It's the first time Golden Trail is coming to Norway. Like. Can't really miss out. I was, it was a big question mark because I had Corona not so long ago and training like has just been coming back. But I mean, it was my terrain, so why not give it a crack and see see how it goes? And how did it go? Cause, <laughs> I mean, because the thing is, we see you win, we see you coming in smiling, but sometimes from the outside we see like, oh, that was super good, super easy. But actually, for the way you've experienced it, it might some be different. Yeah, so. it was it was tough. I managed to remain controlled on the uphill which is always like um, important for me so I don't burn all my matches. But I did glance down at my heart rate and think, Whoo, <laughs> can I keep that going the whole way? But then uh, once the hiking started, that really changes the type of um, exercise you're doing. So it's a lot less about heart rate and more about just sort of leg strength. So that changed it completely. So then it would become a little bit easier. And then the downhill, I just didn't, didn't look back. I figured, look, I, I should be able to beat these guys 
on this boulder field because um, if they think Persets is technical like there is no trail here so I should be able to just go for it so I let loose a little bit and then uh, tried not to look back and you sure did not um so you've bro broken the cross record and uh when we were talking yesterday you were saying it's about like 115 up 150 down you guys were uh i think 110 <laughs> so, <laughs> up <laughs> so uh so that was actually the, the the most you've you've chewed away from the the cross record because i think on the down the, the your overall time was 26 um if i'm not mistaken, yeah i think i had 224 or something like that oh, 224. Watch, but it was definitely wet last year when the course record was set it was bone dry i think it's one of the best summers we've had for a long time 100%. so this was tough conditions like the the, the part this the path was dangerous and, and and we saw that unders who had the previous course record um still ran uh kind of like slightly faster ahead, like about a, not even a minute ahead of his course own course record uh so he had a much better race th this year again because I mean, we could see it on the images. We could see people like slide all over the show, <laughs> and uh, actually, Sarah took a pretty bad fall. Actually, okay. uh, yeah, I wow, mean, okay. one that we could witness. Yeah. Um, and I'm sure there was many <laughs> more happening. And but we were looking at you. It's like there's not much mud on you. Now I fell over once on the uphill. <laughs> <laughs> Ironically enough, <laughs> ladies um, and gentlemen, that is where John Alban falls on the uphill. <laughs> now it was uh, there was some close calls, especially there's a downhill bit of swamp, and I had like a pretty hefty slide in midair, kind of saw this rock poking out of the swamp, and managed to sort of bend my body so my hip just landed sort of like wrapped around it oh. and into the swamp rather than actually on the rock. And th I thought, okay, now I should probably take it a little bit easier i've got a gap i should try and sort of cruise a bit more and get myself to the finish line because something could go bad which could jeopardize the entire race so that was a bit of a wake-up call but apart from that everything went relatively smoothly it looked smooth from the outside and so okay you've got that in the bag and it means you have two wins in the golden series uh what's what's the next step I was going to have a sauna and a shower, maybe some beers. Beautiful. That sounds like an <laughs> awesome plan. And how about like a little <laughs> further away? <laughs> I don't know. I'll, um, I'll see. I mean, Sears and Al is still a question mark. Yep. Uh, it would be really fun, but I, I just don't know if I'm in that sort of shape. And when I do Sears and Al for the first time, I want to be in like the absolute best shape of my life True. and not have CCC in the back of my mind. So it would be a shame if I didn't, but I, I do want to, but then also I do really want to do CCC really well. So uh, sometimes you've got to pick and choose, and I'm not sure. Like, I'll just see how I feel after after this race. Like, recovery is important, and um, there's a lot of racing going on. So Absolutely. And here on the images, we have uh, our female leader, Sophia Lockley, uh, who is now going for the win, and it was a bit of a same scenario there. Um, she was first at the top, already had a bit of a lead, and then she just increased it to, uh, f at the top, actually, 4 minutes 19, and she was never to be seen again. Wow. And she's cool. now striding out on the road, I think, another 4 or 5 minutes, and she'll be there. So uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wrap it here with you. I'm going to try to go down and have a bit of an interview with her. Thank you so much, John, for coming. No, thank you. Sharing for, that, that interview with, with everyone, with uh, everybody listening. Uh, congrats on your home turf. You bring it home. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cheers. No, it, was, it was a lot of fun, and I hope everyone enjoyed the show. I think it was really difficult conditions out there for filming and for creating a live stream. So hopefully it went smoothly, and hopefully everyone got to enjoy um, the running we were doing out there because it was a lot of fun to, to be doing it. I don't know about you out there, but I certainly did. Thank you so much. And uh, we'll keep, uh, obviously, the live stream, and uh, we'll get in the finish line to catch our female winner. Cheers, guys.
coming back. It sounds good on here. Now we can see uh, Sofia Lockley, Lockley approaching. She's probably uh, one and a half minutes away from the finish line. A great run by Sofia. The cross country skier from the US. And I think uh, Martin is, uh, he went downstairs and he's gonna try to catch her and bring her upstairs to get an interview. Yeah, and she's gonna catch some uh, 48k runners, runners here. This uh, Estrana Fuel trail, trail Race, they also uh, do, uh, there's a 100k going on, which is a brutal race. It's a 100k in this terrain with, uh, I think it's uh, 7,000 meters of climb. <clears throat> <laughs> yeah, just approaching this uh, single track and she's going to reach the bridge in about 100 meters and then uh, uh, yeah, she's about uh, one minute away from the finish line. Sophia, who uh, just won a uh, uphill uh, roller ski race on, on Wednesday. Uh, this um, pretty prestigious uh, roller skiing race in Norway called um, Elisabotten Opp. Let's see when she, after she wins this race. I don't know if she's going to keep uh, pushing the cross-country skiing. Maybe uh, winning this race will uh, be a game changer. Yeah, and uh, the the last uh, course uh, or the course record on the female side previously was um, I'm pretty sure it was uh, two. Let me just double check here. Um, I'm not sure if she um, she will uh, take it actually, but um, because of the conditions. But she's uh, pretty pretty close. Is it possible to get some uh, some graphics and some info about the other females? Anyways, it's been a great race for Sofia Lokli. Awesome. Let's see if we can bring uh, Sofia up here uh, as quick as possible. You can see Martin in the background there. He's been sitting here uh, commenting for the last uh, couple of hours. It doesn't look like she's uh, taken a fall. Uh, there's not a lot of uh, mud on her jacket. And I think it was a smart choice to, uh, to put on the jacket very uh, early in the race because it's been super cold in the mountains. All right, and uh, yeah, the the next uh, females are uh, right around the corner. I'm not sure if we can trust the GPS.
Yeah, the previous uh, female uh, course record was three hours and 12 minutes. So she, uh, she crushed that pretty significantly. And that was last year uh, with uh, really dry conditions. So this is really impressive. And I believe last year's uh, uh, winner, Anita Lillescara, is also racing today. I'm not sure how she's doing though. All right, Elisa Ponchet right around the corner, just a few minutes back. She uh, took off her jacket and she doesn't look too muddy either. I don't know if you guys can pick up the, the noise from outside. If, uh, if Martin is doing some interviews with the microphone uh, in the, at the finish line, is it possible to, uh, to use that audio for the, the viewers on YouTube? Let's see uh, who's going to be third then. This is super exciting. Is it going to be uh, Emily? Yeah, Robin RDS on YouTube calls uh, Ponchette our ghost runner. I could agree with that. She's been uh, hiding behind um, Lokli. And here we have Emily. All right. All right, congrats, Emily. Emily Forsberg, who's uh, making a huge comeback here. The last four years, she's had two kids. And uh, this season, she's had, uh, had some solid training, and uh, finally, she's back. And here we have uh, fourth place right behind her. It's possible to get some updates uh, on the next uh, runners. I wonder how uh, Sara Alonso is doing. some info about uh, Sara Alonso. She's approaching the finish line. So she was, uh, she was uh, second to the first uh, summit of uh, Fremste Blohorna and uh, her downhill apparently wasn't as strong as the others. And now, who is this? Is this Here she is. Here she is. And she doesn't seem to be limping, so her fall probably wasn't that, uh, that bad. It, guys, top five uh, women. Oh, 
five. She looks to it looks like she's bleeding a lot from her leg, so that fall was probably pretty severe. <laughs> I'm still happy to take some uh, questions from you guys on the on the YouTube uh, chat. Yeah, I agree with you, uh, Thierry, about the cross-country skiers, uh, athlete. They are the best or the biggest VO2. Uh, we have our. Um, our uh, Norwegian uh, cross-country uh, skier Teresa Juhaug. She um, she just uh, did a sky race up in uh, Lofoten in the northern part of uh, Norway, and um, she did really well. And uh, she's also a really solid um, 10k runner. So yeah, it seems like they can just uh, show up and do uh, do great in uh, in mountain running. And they also do a lot of uh, running in the mountains uh, off season, so uh, it's not just because they have a big, uh, big VO2 max or an, a big engine. They are actually good technical runners as well. Uh, people are asking about uh, Stian Angerbun. I'm not sure where he is right now, but I think he's uh, he's focusing on some other races this season. He uh, recently became a father. So I think he's doing some other stuff, and uh, maybe he's. Um, I think he's training for uh, the Trail World Championships uh, this fall. Yeah, about um, I saw some people mentioned the uh, helicopters in the chat. Uh, if you follow uh, Anders Charvik on uh, Strava, he um, I don't know if he's uh, reached the finish line yet. I haven't seen him, but uh, he's probably one of those guys who puts down the down even more miles than Jim Walmsley every week, and he also is a helicopter pilot. Sometimes he takes his helicopter and he rides it to the starting line of races. So you should uh, definitely check out the Anders Sjervik on, uh, on Strava. Caitlin Fielder here. Now we're going to see tons of runners, runners uh, approaching the finish line. Julie Roux. I'm probably butchering that name, but... Um, I believe, with her uh, boyfriend Johnny Luna Lima from Colorado, Bailey Kowalczyk. Yeah, okay, I know, but... 
And who do we have here? I think it's uh, maybe one of the Elcott sisters. Yeah. Sanna Elcott Telander. Running for uh, Merrill. She's a really good uh, descender, but I. Another great uh, finish by Sanna. She's been doing a lot of races this summer. I think she was just in um, Arin Sal in, uh, in uh, Andorra and did the uh, Como Padrosa, if I'm not uh, wrong. And then she did, um, I think she did the uh, East Room Sky Race and some other uh, Scandinavian races. Yeah, people are asking about the, the Strava of uh, Anders Kjærvik. I think his nickname is Anders Pony, in one word. Anders Pony. He's also a very good uh, Strava art or artist. We have uh, Hannah Russell from Great Britain. All right, here we have the top six women. Lockley first, and then we have uh, Ponchette, two minutes and 40 seconds behind her. Emily Forsberg, third, three minutes and 58 seconds behind uh, Lockley. And then um, Irondel, four minutes, 14 uh, seconds behind. Vasset, all right, we have a Norwegian, Norwegian on fifth place, awesome. And then we have uh, Sylvia Norskar, another solid uh, Norwegian runner, 
running for Hoka, an untold movement, and Dali, I believe. And then we have another Elkot uh, sister. Martin is back. In the area, area net. Yeah, it's been lonely without you. <laughs> it's How, intense, man. Wh what was it like down at the finish line? It's crazy. Like people are super stoked, and you know, it, as you were saying, like it's a very small village uh, feel. Everybody's out here, no, no matter what the weather is, and they're cheering for everyone. It's actually pretty cool. And uh, so yeah, now we've got our top ten, Sofia locally. Uh, I will try. I will actually I will do hopefully more than try. I will bring her up here so we can have just like we did with Ed John uh, an interview <clears throat> with her and get her impression because. Uh, she was not definitely people, uh, the person who people bet on, and I think it's even more exciting to see, uh, like to discover basically this person, see how she trains. Uh, we know she does a lot of uh, cross-country skiing, and then obviously some, uh, some um, how do you say, ski on wheels? Yeah, I would say. Uh, uh, roller ski? Roller ski. Roller, roller ski. ski. Uh, but like, I'm, I'm eager to know more about uh, this uh, this female athlete who is the 2022 Strong of Your Champion. But Grete Vosset on fifth place. Yeah, yeah, yeah. extremely strong. Yeah. <coughs> but yeah, we were talking about uh, this before the before we started this uh, today, uh, just about like uh, wild cards. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Luckily, it was a wild card. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. We knew, like, it was a big question mark. We knew she had the engine. Yeah, okay, so I'm gonna go back down and try to grab um, Sophia for her to join us for a quick interview. And then uh, I believe this is gonna be a wrap here on the images. We got Lucille Germain uh, from France, uh, who is about to finish. And um, I'll leave you with Hans again. Uh, I will be back, stay with us. Yeah. Yeah, so keep uh, keep it coming with uh, with the questions. I see uh, Olav and the Bjornar is uh, is pretty active here on the on the chat. I see there's some uh, people talking about Johnny Luna Lima. He did uh, really well in a bunch of Spartan races. That's right. I uh, I got to know Johnny last week. I did the uh, the course um, uh, run through with uh, with Johnny and uh, and John Alban and uh, the local guy uh, Jonas Hesterg. And uh, Johnny is a really good uh, downhill uh, runner, and I can only attribute that to uh, his obstacle course um, background. John Alban has also been and he is, he is still an uh, obstacle course uh, racer and um, seems to be a, be a thing there with obstacle course guys being good at downhill uh, running. Maybe it's got something to do with um, having to take uh, quick decisions and uh, not being uh, scared. See some uh, beautiful images here from uh, from the first climb up to uh, Fremste Blohuna. You can see Magnin is back here and uh, John Alban on the out and back. Super gnarly terrain. 
and Sardar Lonsel's fall. Here we have the, the ladies' uh, winner locally. Amazing performance by the American. And she does have a dual citizenship, so um, maybe we'll get her to. Uh, maybe we'll get some people for the next uh, Golden Trail Series event to change the, the flag to a Norwegian flag. Here we have uh, John Alban approaching the finish line. What a champ! Some people in the comments called him the GOAT. That's up for discussion, but it's um, certainly up there. And Martin is downstairs uh, trying to get uh, the winner, Sophia Lokley, to uh, appear for in to the studio for an interview. And uh, I'm going to leave you guys with uh, the pictures from um, from today's uh, race. Hans is uh, leaving his seat and I'm finally losing my puffy jacket going up and down the stairs and finally warming up here on the screen. Karina Corsolio finishing all smiles, uh, probably in like 13th, 14th position. We we're expecting her to do really well on the technical, but she knew that she, uh, her training has not been uh, entirely satisfying to her standards. But still, she's making it around and uh, going to finish. <clears throat> Talking about finish and strong finish, we've got here our 2022 women's champion. And uh, I say a lot of people, including me, weren't expecting you <laughs> there. Yeah, me neither. I was pretty terrified going into the race today. I, after doing part of the course a couple of days ago, I was definitely never done anything like this. And I do love my uphill running, but the downhill and all the technical part was definitely going to be a challenge. And I knew that going in. So this morning I was pretty, pretty nervous. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> It, it, that's what I had envisioned as well, and then I uh, was missing a lot of information about you, and I saw the American flag, and I'm like, okay, well, she can run on technical, like, you, you ran uh, Broken Arrow. Right. So I'm like, I mean, to U.S. standards, this is technical, but Very this much. is a whole yeah. new level here. So I'm like, okay, how is she going to be able to keep up? And luckily, I had Han Hans with me, and he's like, <laughs> man, she's got dual citizenship. She's from here. <laughs> like, she knows this terrain, and you proved him r absolutely right, because even on the technical, uh, so going up and up to the highest point, you had four minutes, 19 seconds on second place. Okay, yeah, I did, I did not know that. Right, Yeah. and at that point, it was Sarah Alonso. Right. <clears throat> 
Because, yeah, I'm sure... I saw her... Or, yeah, when I was coming down, I saw she was in second. Right, for right. Women, yeah. And so then she actually took a pretty bad fall, but she kind oh, of shoot. got back on her feet. Yeah. Uh, and then we... Like, she kind of fell back a, a little bit. So this uh, chart here is, um, is is a breakdown of the segments. So the uphill, okay. the technical, the flat, and the downhill. And in green is the fastest time in the women. So you've racked it all. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> I would not have expected that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, then... The, the, the darker red it gets, then the further away yeah. it is. So Elise Ponce apparently was the closest to you on the third, on the, on the first three segments, mm -hmm. although we do not have the numbers. Uh, but then you can get a, a feel of, of how far back and how much time you've put. Um, I don't know if it's on each section or accumulated, because obviously right. when you do the final time, it doesn't add up. You don't add like all the times in yeah, each segment. Yeah. Um, so that's as much as I could read from this chart. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, instead of reading uh, numbers, actually, I want to just get it from you. We were lucky to have you here. Um, so you said it was, it was a bit of a doubt uh, going in. Uh, however, right from the get-go, boom, uh, you take off and you're in the lead. What yeah, happens there? I wasn't really planning to take the lead, but I knew that I should take advantage of the uphills. And so I started, like, I felt like I kept it in control and I just... I thought maybe I would try to run with Sarah or some of the other women, but um, I found myself like going ahead of them on the first like road section. Um, and then, yeah, it was nice to have a lot of men to follow and draft off of a bit. Um, and so, yeah, I guess I just found myself not with the other women, but just following or like running with some of the guys, which was which was great. Yeah. And so <clears throat> you're in a lead. You're kind of pulling away slowly. Um, at this point, we still have a lot of women that are kind of close by, and we're like, oh, okay, maybe they're going to close on her on the technical yeah. order. <laughs> and then you get to the... So how was the first, like, boulder field up to um, the out and back? Yeah, that was... It was actually more enjoyable than I thought. It was kind of fun. Uh, I was... All I was thinking of was, like, as soon as I was going to get down, that was when it was... People were going to come flying by me, and that's when I... Like, what I was really nervous for. It was definitely... It was clearly super wet conditions, and so... It wasn't too bad, like, going up on it. You could kind of... Yeah. The rocks were, like, stable. Um, you just had to be pretty aware and conscious of where you are putting yeah. your feet. Um, and then, yeah, the downhill was... It was slippery. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and then that's the thing. Like, when you have momentum and you try yeah. to slow down and, and try to get traction right. anywhere on the ground, there's none. And so that's where exactly. you're just like... Ooh. Yeah, I found myself <clears throat> definitely doing, like, a lot of crab... Walking. Yep, yep, yep. And that was pretty fun. Down climbing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> did you have gloves? I don't remember. I did, yeah. yeah. Good so move. I, uh, I ended up eating quite a bit of dirt when I was like trying to get my snacks out. It was a little crunchy, but. <laughs> Extra calories. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> cool. And then, so then you get off the technical part, and then um, <clears throat> only Emily Forsberg, and uh, we don't have all the splits, but mm. I, we've been told that Emily Forsberg on that section put three minutes on you. Okay, I believe that. Yeah. But the thing is, she was so far back in oh, the up yeah. that actually she moved into second place. Okay. And she was chasing you, but then she, she ended up on the, on the flat land on the bug. Yeah. And we're like, okay, what's going to happen? Right. But then as soon as he got actually runnable, Elise Ponce started motoring him. Yeah. And um, again, she had a very uh, solid technical uh, mm -hmm. section. And, um, and you were not uh, giving, giving up any ground, giving in any ground. You were actually moving at the same pace. Yeah. <laughs> Is, is there going to be somebody bro breaking down or, or is that going to change? But uh, it was a little bit like the men's race where John, after the technical, mm -hmm. boom, had like over three minutes lead and was never to be seen again. He just kept consistently increasing okay. uh, his, his lead. Um, uh, but you, you got off the technical part and so what do you think? Because essentially yeah. that's supposed to be the hardest part I mean, I was most worried for the technical part and it, I found the section after that to be the hardest like I I had some low points there I like my legs were just flooding like no other and uh, uh oh I'm getting yeah <laughs> yeah well yeah it was definitely the hardest part for me it was the the boggy flat section I uh I had to eat all of my snacks at that point to stay on my feet. <laughs> That's super interesting because we actually talked about that, that the nutrition part, yeah. in the sense that when you go through this kind of terrain, you burn so much more energy. Oh my gosh, So yeah. you have to actually compensate. So it's good. You were you were still there. You were on top yeah. of it and you're like, okay, I got to eat. I think I was a little bit late, but I, <clears throat> I made it up. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Now that's good to hear. And so then the final section uh, on the little ladders, did you, like that's the question. Did you go that, over or on the side? I went on the side. My yeah. feet were not, I was not about to try to balance on that. 
stuff. It was have, better um, to go straight through the mud. <laughs> get, get ugly. Cool. And so when, at what point in the race did you did you figure it out you had it in a bag? Like the last 10 minutes. I was, I was so sure that someone was going to, like one of the women were going to fly by me at the end. I really didn't know. <laughs> well, running scared is definitely a good way to do Yeah, to I guess so. Yeah, totally. So um, massive uh, entrance into the Golden Trip World Series. Um, what's next in store? I'll do Sierra next weekend, okay. um, and then I'll head back to the U.S. Um, I'm still training for skiing, and so I'll go back into that for a bit. But I definitely think I want to try to do Pikes Peak in well, If you're an uphill staff. runner. Yeah, I know. That, would, that one's going to be perfect. <laughs> so, I mean, Sierra Nelly is uphill. Right. Um, uh, oh, I'm blanking here. Um, the uphill at Manitou Springs. Uh, no, before Flagstaff. Oh, Pikes Peak. Pikes Peak, yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the end of the day, peeps. Sorry. <laughs> I'm, getting, uh, I'm getting tired. Yeah, <clears throat> so these two are uphill big time. And you mm -hmm. said uh, when we started the interview that this is your forte. Yeah, I think. So, well, <laughs> yeah. you showed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so we, we can hope to see you in, in South Island for sure yes, next weekend. Yes, definitely next weekend. Beautiful. Yeah. So congratulations, Thank our you. 2022 Stronda Fjord champion. Thank you so much for being here yeah, and sharing you. this interview with the whole audience in the live coverage. And this is it uh, for us. Thank you so much for tuning in, for sending all your comments, uh, interacting uh, with us. This is what makes the race exciting. If we were on our own, it wouldn't be fun. And thank you again to the athletes for crazy performances, uh, only falling a few times. Yeah. And you well, actually managed to dodge the life because we didn't see it. <laughs> oh, wow. Well, I took a nice dive into one puddle. So that's good. <laughs> all right. And uh, stay tuned. We'll see you at Cersinal. Yes. And that's going to be just next weekend. And so we're going to have a lot more excitement. And... Two days winner. Thank you.